now waking up a foxy no-tail. Yes, it is, it's a late one, Slack, I have to say. Late? No. You wouldn't be up <laughs> late at night doing something like this, would you? It's 25 minutes to 11, Slack. I should be tucked up in bed by now, having all my lovely dreams and things. Funny, we, we constantly keep moving these times because nothing's working for anybody. And then, then we're missing our Jesse this week. I know, and by, by the sounds of things, we could be missing Jessie for a, f- a few weeks, actually. She's uh, a lot going on at home for Jessie with, um, well, I, I don't, I'm not going to get into it. It's not my business, but yeah, I think Jessie's probably going to be uh, even more on and off than usual over the next few weeks as she gets things organised her Ren. So um, I guess that does give us a little bit of opportunity to have some more wiggle room over uh when we record and we really do need to nail it down if we're going to be doing these um monthly um live ones which we're going to have to do on the next week one so we need to pick a time for that and while they're all asleep i mean what mm. huh? <laughs> yeah anyway i suppose i should introduce the podcast shouldn't i slag hello well, yeah, and welcome yeah. back to the uh, unofficial minecraft update podcast this is episode 48 and technically this is our Christmas special, which is why, hopefully, if I've remembered, there's Christmas music on in the background for our intro instead of our usual intro music. Uh, copyright free, of course. Uh, my my name's Foxy Notel. I'm joined today by Slack Lizard. We're both content creators on the Minecraft uh, thingy my but we do YouTube and streaming. <laughs> and I'm not used to doing things late at night and my brain doesn't work the best of times anyway. So this could be interesting. Jeez. You're, you're going to have a fun time when you get down to edit this tomorrow you're gonna be like what happened yeah yeah i am uh (laughs) i think it's gonna be a relatively short one it's obviously near christmas we've not had a whole bunch of feedback and stuff from uh the last couple of episodes and we've got practically no news so that's good but what we have had slack which is really exciting is we now have 19 patrons that i would like to say thank you very much for for supporting the show which is incredible isn't it much love and appreciation for all of y'all it is appreciated yeah, very much so so yeah of course we are now uh, fully supported by patron which means you get no ads on your podcasts now if you're listening to them through your favorite podcast app and uh, I've, I've got it in my notes that i should ask you nicely if you can and you're enjoying the show to support us on patreon by going to the patron.com not the patron.com but <laughs> to patron.com forward slash the minecraft update uh, the prices are per podcast, not per month, but you can set a cap if you only would like to uh, pledge a certain amount per month. And the minimum perks you will get is access to our patron only feed for bonus content when we're going to record that. And I've got some news on that in a minute. Access to our live episode recordings, which we've just hinted about a second ago, and access to our patron only Discord channels. And you get a fancy Discord role as well. So. It's a good time to become a member that right now, Slack, actually, as you're listening to this, because next week is our first patron only live show, which will be in the Discord, uh, which will probably be on Wednesday, the 28th at a time. <laughs> at, at a time, yeah. Yeah. What time? Yes, that's 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 the time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So join the Discord to get uh, notified on that because we really need to pick a time for that. And I've spoken to Jesse, and although she's going to be struggling to make our usual recording times for the podcast, we are going to be hopefully getting together before the end of the month to record our little bonus show, Pokemon Special. So if you're interested in hearing that, you're going to need to be a patron, mate. That's the only way. Are you a patron yet, Slack? Uh, I work here. No, you can't let's no. No, it's patron only. Well, <laughs> uh, I guess you're gonna have a fun podcast next week by yourself. Just put it out there. <laughs> okay, right. Uh Slack. Last week I had to make an apology because Google Podcasts still hated us and hadn't uploaded our last two shows. Um this week when I uploaded the podcast, the service that Google gets our feed from said it had updated it, looked all fine. But Google Podcasts still absolutely refused to download our show. Until today, I did some fiddling. I don't think I did anything that Google would have really cared about. But all of a sudden, after I fiddled, our last two shows all of a sudden appeared there. So it could be 100% resolved. Or then this episode and subsequent ones might also be missing for a few weeks after this one. Who knows? I don't know with Google anymore. It's a bit of a problem. But hopefully, fingers crossed, it's all solved now. Jeez. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, I remember... 
you immediately said everything was fine the last one that I was involved in and I remember looking at the Discord and somebody was like, It's not there I'm like, It's not fine. It's yeah. Not fun. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I think for the last two podcasts I've said it's all fine now and then turned out it wasn't. So um, I'm doing good. I've got a good track mm-hmm. record for getting it wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right, it's like, what have you been up to this week, bud? Hiding. Honestly, hiding. hiding. Hiding more than anything. I don't know. For about the last two months now, and it's, it, I've just started openly talking about it because it doesn't look good. You know, you've caught the brunt end of it several times now. <laughs> I'm just angry. Like all the time, I am. I am furious, just ready to explode for no reason. Like, like I could be just sitting here at my desk and my water bottle fall, and it's not. I just get a little bit annoyed over it. I become just straight up furious. Like, want to grab it and throw it through the window and turn around and smash all my monitors. I've I've got so much rage built up in here in me here lately, and I don't know why. I don't know why my life's better than it's ever been, you know? Uh, um, I'm engaged. I got a baby on the way. I, I'm doing a job I love. My family backs me and supports me. I've got an amazing community and everything. But I'm just, I'm ready to just explode. And it's just, it's in order to not explode at people, I'm just having to isolate myself. And I can't. We all have phases like that. Um... Mine's been for like two months now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You did, I don't know how publicly. You want to share everything, but you mentioned to me that you've been struggling to to get your regular medications for things uh, recently. So that's probably yeah, got a lot to do with it. That's probably playing a lot with it. Yeah, the the, the just insurance issues. Is, and we'll leave it at that. But uh, it's uh, uh, mm, it's hard to adapt. <laughs> Don't forget having a baby on the way and being engaged are really stressful things to do, and we handle those things in strange ways, uh, especially. For you, with you being in a completely different country on the other side of the Atlantic to the person you're engaged to and from where your baby's going to be born. So that's going to be a natural natural stress, which can amplify if you, well, you can't really deal with it because it's a waiting game. You know, there's there's there'll be silently millions of worries going on in the back of your mind. Maybe you're even aware of them, maybe you're not, but that will all until until the baby comes and until you know your circumstances change and you're together that's gonna that's gonna be whirling around so i think that's gonna be something you probably you got to get a handle on really i know and i can't figure out how that's the problem (laughs) i can't figure it out i'm trying to get it in check but it's just like you had an incident the other day you said something so trivial and, like, I didn't get just mad at you. I got nuclear mad at you. <laughs> like, I, you all don't know, I was keyboard warrior on him. I was coming at him, teeth bared, claws out. And there was no yeah. need. Merry and Christmas, just... everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, roar. Maybe you should change your, uh, your like, avatar from Thanos Slack to Hulk Slack for a bit. Maybe, uh <laughs> Maybe that would help. <laughs> How do you deal with being angry? I thought I'm just always angry. <laughs> I am. I am. Maybe I just need to admit that that I'm just I'm always on edge here lately. Uh, that um, might, might be the better approach to go with. <laughs> you wouldn't maybe. like me when I'm, I'm angry. Yeah, I'm sure it'll smooth out. Yeah, I mean, like I say, you, everybody has phases where they. Like last year, I just went through a phase of. Everything was great. My channel was doing great. My family was doing great. Everything was great, but I just felt so miserable for for months. Um, and we all deal with that in different ways. So it's probably just life getting to you a little bit and, and just poking at you in the only way it knows how. I hope it clears up. I do, because I don't like being this way. Because I'm not just snapping no. it. I'm snapping at everyone before I realize it. And, and then I feel horrible for it. You know what I mean? But it just, uh, it, it, it bites. And if you've been there, you understand. Has your week been it, any better? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been great. I was just going to say, it probably doesn't help that you live on the like weirdest sleep schedule in the world ever. You really don't do yourself any favors with that. And you do put yourself out there a lot. And that is draining. Even if you're a social person like you are, it's draining. So maybe you just need a bit of time off. Maybe you just need to take a week. Take the Christmas holidays off, Slack. Just, just do it. No. Go to bed. <laughs> I can't sleep more than two hours. 
<laughs> well, that's what, there you go. <laughs> but that's your problem. I seriously Jeez. wake up. You could set an alarm to it. I am the alarm. I sleep for no more than two hours and I'm wide awake. Wow. Okay. Well, I think we've gotten to the bottom of, <laughs> of your issues. <laughs> uh, and I, I really, no, genuinely, though, I hope uh, I hope you start feeling a little bit better soon. But I, I, I honestly think uh, a bit of time off and a little bit of downtime probably do you, do you well. Uh, not that I'm trying to get rid of you, of course. I don't want you to miss the podcast. You're not allowed to have downtime <laughs> from that. But everything else, okay? <laughs> 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 okay, my week. I have um I've got my kids here with me at the moment, so I haven't been streaming, but what I have been doing is getting through my incredibly long to-do list. So all of the things that have just been lingering that I haven't sorted out for ages, like phone calls I've needed to make, administration stuff, uh things that were broken on websites that I've been putting off, all that sort of stuff. I'm slowly getting through it to the point where there's only a couple of things left on that list now, which is absolutely amazing because that means Laundry. I can get back into doing. And, and okay, and I, I need to add that one on. Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, that pile yeah. of laundry that we all have. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got, I'm on top of the laundry. I'm on top of the the, the like the dishwasher and the cleaning. That's all fine. Um, so yeah, I'll be able to get back to actually doing the stuff I should be doing very soon and uh, making good on all those promises I've been making on software and whatnot over the last few weeks. Um, obviously been spending a little bit of time with the boys as well, and I've been re-watching uh, the Transformers movies for some reason. They just got into my head the other day, and uh, I couldn't find them on Netflix or Amazon Prime or Disney. Um, so I went on Amazon Prime, like, because you, you you can buy stuff on there, right? Yeah. And they had the box set for all five films, although technically the six, because there's a Bumblebee movie too, and they're doing another one next year apparently as well. But yeah, the first five movies, fifteen ninety nine. I thought, Oliver's never seen them. I'm going to get them and sit there and watch them with him. And I uh, probably regret that a little bit because it is a 12, but you expect Transformers to be a kid-friendly 12. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of language in there. It's like a lot of, <laughs> a lot of language. Mm. But uh, he's really enjoying it. We've watched one or two together, and he thinks it's the best thing ever. So, um, yeah, nice. that's... <laughs> That's been my week. Jeez. Okay, on to the feedback. Uh, we've had, had, considering I said we haven't had much, we've had a reasonable amount of feedback, not much bug date, uh, a little bit of wish list. In fact, we've got a couple of pages of wish list and a bunch of questions. But we've got yeah a good amount of feedback, which is nice, starting with Lucy that says, I'm new to TB and I did not know of Bruno until the pod this week. Delightful, insightful, and entertaining episode. The chemistry between the hosts was wonderful, and I hope he can come back soon. And I have to say, yeah, it was lovely having Bruno on. He was absolutely brilliant. He made a very entertaining uh, wish list section. We were laughing our heads off at that. I don't suppose you had a chance to catch that slack with your busy schedule, did you? Yeah, well, no, no. Mm, no, no, I don't. Mm, mm, mm. no. Well, that's fine, but it might be worth checking out at some point when you've got a few minutes because the obviously we grilled him on how how he became to be what he is and what he does, and he's actually got a very very interesting uh, story. So um, yeah, uh, it was it was an absolute pleasure listening to Bruno and talking uh, through yeah to all to him through all those things. See, I can't talk slack. I'm just mumbling because it's late. Oh, don't worry. Don't. Th- that's my natural state. So this will be the mumbling podcast. <laughs> the mumble podcast. Is it the I'm mumbo like, jumbo podcast? Down. Dun dun. dun. <laughs> <laughs> All Christmas right. So next special, is... aka mumble mumble podcast. There we go. Yep, that's yep, the new title. Good. Excellent. Yep. Sorry. So our next go. feedback comes from the big blue frog, who says, "Fun listening to Bruno on the podcast." Yes, it was. It was. Quite quite funny in places. Uh, we was all laughing. It was very nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, don't... Uh, when you do listen to it back, as much as the wish list section was really good, Slack, don't listen to that bit, because... You know, yeah, we didn't let anything in, in the good ideas, being honest. Right. <laughs> DJ Chris 2019 says, The last podcast was great. I really enjoyed Bruno coming on. He's a great person, just like the rest of you all. Thank you very much, DJ Chris. I appreciate that. And it's nice that we're all great. You're salty about the wish list now, aren't you? Would you like any good ideas, Foxy? Um, uh, well, mm. there were, there were, nothing really of, you know, there was... Um, let me have a look. What do we put in the good ideas bin? We uh, cheese. Bruno asked for cheese in the good ideas bin. 
Uh, the ability to prevent baby mobs from growing up may have gone in. Uh, being able to set fire. Uh, no, you know, when you get on set on fire by soul fire and you go orange, we, we want yep. that to be blue. Yep, um, Colourable light sources, like, like yep. dying light sources with different colours. A community yep. chest, like an ender chest, but everyone can access it. Yep, yep. yep. Diable flowers, on, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. we. it's not impossible... That, you know, last week when you were on, we had sticky redstone and vertical repeaters and comparators. Yeah, and they the same came thing up. twice. No, yeah, they again, they no. may have completely no. randomly just got suggested by other people, and both of those no. may have accidentally ended up in the good no. ideas bin slug. No, so I don't it's know what happened. I tried to stop Bruno and Jesse, no. but they... Uh... <laughs> No, it can't work like that. It's in limbo. You've got one negative and one positive, so it's not in or out yet. Mm -mm. Oh, man. <laughs> mm, right. Okay. Mm. I'll have a word with the people that go into charge of the good ideas bin and let them know that they're, they're on you, hold. You, you know something else I've learned over the last probably two to three weeks? <laughs> go well, on. For one, you, you, you just said cheese, and I've mm. learned I can't have cheese. Oh, man. Cheese. You can't have cheese. Cheese. Okay, cheese. cheese. Yeah. I've I've had a condition that I didn't I, I don't know how to really explain. You know how my neck is. You know mm. you've seen. I, I have yeah. that condition elsewhere on my body too. Okay. And it turns out, you want to know what the trigger is? Cheese. Cheese. It's cheese. <laughs> don't I can have all like... the dairy. In it. I can't have cheese. I can't. None. If I have huh. cheese, that happens within two hours. Wow. Okay. Yep. Yep. Well, I would I would I, say I break geez, out in this but weird it's probably rash. a bit. Bit close mm. to the to home, so <laughs> oof. So I yeah, think it's, like, like everything I've been looking at the last like week, I walk through the store and it's like macaroni and cheese, yeah, cheese. <laughs> chili cheese dogs. Is All that these, there's cheese everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I love cheese and I can't have it, Foxy. <laughs> That's no what cheeses, it is. We've, no cheese we've solved the problem. It's sleep deprivation and cheese deprivation. There you go. Problem solved. How would you feel tomorrow if you couldn't have no more cheese? But to be fair, oh, no, because that's pizza. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I can't have pizza. The pizza yeah. the cheese doesn't really feature all that much in my diet, but I do eat a lot of pizza and I do eat a lot of cheese on toast. So, yeah, yeah, I'd be pretty miffed. No lasagna? <laughs> no lasagna? Uh, yeah, I do eat lasagna, no but it's not cheese. No, no Parmesan cheese? No, I don't really with that. Mm. Mm. No. No tacos? Mm, not with cheese in, no. no. Excuse me? Huh? I, well, I, I don't, we don't really have tacos over here. Um, so I, I have burritos, which I guess probably have a bit of cheese in, but like, uh, I can't remember ever having a taco, to be honest with you. I think I must have once or twice. Oh, wow. You just triggered a lot of people out there. Good luck for that incoming in the <laughs> comment section. Mm, feedback I'll head over to Taco coming. Bell tomorrow and I'll go get myself some cheesy tacos and they'll think of you, Slack. You're welcome. <laughs> Lamb Sky next to you says, Hello, guys. It's known that Java is the oldest version, but it does not mean it's always the right one. In the new beta, they did a nerf to campfires, which implies that mobs that die do not give out cooked food anymore. What do you got? Oh, hold on. It's, it's, it's not the person, okay? It's not. But there's so many. What, is that grammar errors that it's yeah, flagging? Yeah, there's there's like millions of blue lines on it. I haven't gone, I haven't, <laughs> this week I've been a bit lazy and I haven't gone through them all and spell checked and grammar done them to make it easy for us. So I just thrown us in the deep end. I thought it'd be all right. It's a Christmas special. No one's going to listen to it anyway. It's fine. Yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah. And they want to know <laughs> what do you guys think about Bedrock sacrificing features in the name of what is intended or not? This, this this feels like a lot of features and questions here. Yeah, uh, yeah, feedback. It's it's like a bit both. of a weird and one for feedback, to be honest with you. But crack on. And what do you think about the Bedrock version always giving away stuff that we use as features for years? I never used one of those farms before, but I guess I get frustrated when I see cool features getting removed like that. At least <laughs> they fix the bugs, which make Hoglin swim upwards in lava before implementing. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me mm -hmm. let me let me boil this down to the the simpleness of it. So M2 Lansky is annoyed that campfires no longer set mobs That's on fire problem. when it kills them, so you don't get free cooked meat, which I think's fine because campfires are designed to cook meat by interacting with them, and I think uh, they were a very 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 OP free cooked meat farm. So I, I think I think that's the right thing to do. I think uh, sacrificing features, whether they've been in the game for a long time or not, 
if that's the way the game's intended to be played, it can be really frustrating if you've got ideas and farms and, you know, the plans to use those sorts of things. But if that's the way the game's supposed to be, then you've just got to adapt to it. And don't forget that when they do make changes, and this is one of the reasons I love Bedrock Edition, it's it means you've got to learn it all again. With Java Edition, it gets boring because it doesn't change. Nothing ever changes. It's the same game every single week, whereas Bedrock, every month, it's like a whole new game that you've got to learn. And I genuinely like that. So it can be frustrating at times, especially when it's a bug that's like caused a problem but when they're actually going no this is wrong this is how it should be then generally most of the time oh, no. it's I, i'm happy with it <laughs> no see this is sacrificing something in the name of parody for java edition is all it's doing okay yes whether you want to agree or not that the it should drop cook food or not is not the issue all right what about next week they decide that we don't get trident killers because java doesn't have them uh well <laughs> uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've had these conversations before, and I think it's like when they they got rid of the uh, the coral fans uh, being a, a but they pathfinding that. block, right? They, reverted, they reverted it, but the argument, the fair argument from us, the players, were that would be fine if we had alternatives to XP farms and things like that, but we don't. And I think that's the same argument for the Trident Killer. If we had entity cramming or if we had Java mechanics where there were more mobs or, you know, other ways to deal with them like they can on Java edition, then yes, that's fine. Get rid of the Trident Killer. But there's no alternative. So getting rid of it now without implementing those alternatives would be a problem. You get splash potions, you know, it, it's just because it's not the meta. You know, it's like everybody and their brother, oh, let's build a portal ticking goat farm. Well, you can make a goat based nether farm. You can do it. It's just it requires a lot more work. Yeah. Yeah. So portal ticking gold farms, I think they should get rid of because that's blatantly a bug. And for trident killers, we've both agreed on this before. We believe that the tridents should take damage over time. They should uh, they should take durability damage and they shouldn't be player kill. So yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. So, I know, but it just feels like they sacrificed something in the name of parody that was bogus. Because you could also use those to kill off your XP in farms that you were AFKing at where you wanted to get the looting from the drop. So you wanted yeah. to collect up the items, but you wanted to burn off the XP because we have such an issue with the XP. Now how do we kill off the XP? You Well, if you were doing it properly, you would be standing there with a sword and an auto clicker and a beacon and, and, and chopping them and taking the XP, I guess. Or you would have a mechanism with many, many waters and slimes that throws the XP up to you. It just means you've got to play differently and think def differently at the end of the day. But I think, I think from my point of view, the argument is if they're going to get rid of stuff before we have the right alternatives, like if... If they're saying this is how the game should be played, but we don't have the ability to play it that way because the other parts of it don't exist, then they shouldn't implement those parity changes. Do you know what I mean? Mm, I agree. Yeah. So, yeah so I just think it's still, in the name of parity, changed something that had more or less become a feature over here because it had been here that long. And then all of a sudden somebody classifies it as a bug. Yeah, but then about... you could say the same thing for Java Edition. Like, Java Edition had underfloor slab lighting forever, and then they just decided that if the uh, light can't travel through any full surface, you know, that was a feature that people used forever. And then they, they took it away because they said that's not how it's supposed to be. Yeah, well, it's like we've had it over here. What if they took it away tomorrow, you know? Yeah, exactly. So th these things happen. At the end of the day, the games, it's a fluid game. It's not like most games that, most games get the odd patch, don't they? And they fix a few bugs and then they might add some DLC later on. But Minecraft, they're not just adding DLC every year or every six months with these new versions. They're constantly like adapting the game and making the game and I think that's what makes crime Minecraft special, you know? They make it, oh, they're constantly agree. making it good I agree that throughout. it's good. It's, it's good that they're doing things, but then, it, then you know, this one I know has triggered you in the past. They went back and intentionally changed something right now for a parody purpose, right? Yeah. Yet features that are coming out in the newest update are not even in parody. Yeah, that's a problem. Don't talk mm -hmm. to me about villagers. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
<laughs> but let's worry about that campfire that's setting something on fire when there's so many other things that features coming out to this day are not in parody. Like with the LAs and other things, they're not the same. Yeah. And I think a lot of that's going to be just complication. How hard is it to bring that in line with parity? And I'm sure the developers are just like everyone else and they're thinking, what can we achieve quickly so that we are seen to be achieving something, you know? <laughs> Although we would all do that in a job. You know, if you've got a job uh, and, and you're not effectively making any progress because you've taken on the big problems, then you're not going to get just told off by your boss, but everybody, the players are going to be like, well, you, you didn't do anything. You know, you, yeah. you've got this parity stuff. You're not doing anything for parity. And they've been ticking off massive amounts of parity stuff over the last few months regularly because they're picking what I would consider probably the relatively easy bits to do. The just one bug, right? An easy one bug? Is that what they're picking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just one bug. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, okay. So M2 Lansky uh, then continued uh, with a uh, like basically a, a thoughtful after post from that saying, after thinking for a while about the campfire nerf, I find myself not liking parity no more. I know Java have tons of school, uh, cool features that would be nice to have in Bedrock, like combat update, banner shield, and heating, uh, healing after eating. Uh, but how many other features we Bedrock players will need to sacrifice in the name of parity or the intended way? Uh, let's be realistic here. <laughs> we would never get those features any, uh, anywhere soon anyway. Mm. Well, I, I think we've probably argued with that one to death already with what we've said, but yeah. 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 It's a fair point to make, you know, if you play Bedrock Edition all day long and they're taking things off you and they don't appear to be giving anything back, that's fine. But I think I think you need to look at the whole picture. And it's very easy to be biased towards feeling like they're taking all these things away from Bedrock Edition when we're not regular Java players. And I'm sure regular Java players would be like, oh, they took this off us or they've given this from Bedrock and we didn't want it, you know? I'd be interested in an example of that. Uh <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> right. JJ1109 says, for your information, Google Podcast doesn't seem to have updated their feed for the podcast for a couple of weeks now. Just letting you know in case anyone else has the same issue. Mm. I'm sorry, JJ. I'm sorry. It's, it's not my fault. It's genuinely not my fault. You have no idea how many hours, literally hours and hours over the last few weeks I have spent fiddling and changing and tweaking everything to try and make everything happy. I have compared our podcast feed against like the top 10 podcasts in the in the world to see if they because there's like podcast feed validators and I thought maybe that maybe there's an issue maybe Google doesn't like our feed for whatever reason right and I compared it against the top 10 podcasts in the world and ours validates better from the, than them you know according to all of the validators we're pretty much perfect so I try, I try. Oh. It'll be all right soon. Jeez. Oh. Sorry, guys. Marble Jade says, sigh. I guess I'll come out of hiding and admit that my first attempts at YouTube content was done on an older iPad Pro using the screen record button, recording my audio on my phone using a stock headset mic and syncing the two audios in a free editing software on my iPad. Don't worry, those videos are now hidden and never to be seen by the world again. It was cumbersome and time-consuming, but it is possible. Yeah, yeah, we talked a bit about uh, recording on iPads and stuff lately and how, how I think it's going to be a whole bunch easier to do that in the future. And uh, do you know what else I was thinking about with that Slack? Mm. Right? What's that? You know when you, re when you re record on an iPad or a phone... Um, you can, obviously, it's got a USB port, effectively. So you could plug a microphone into it and sacrifice the fact that you've got your charger in there. But with all of these modern advances in, in audio now and, like, audio in artificial intelligence and noise reduction, I bet, you know, it will be pretty standard in, in a few months, maybe even, like, a year, that all of the audio that you record into, like, a device with a pretty rubbish microphone like an iPad or something like that, it's going to sound pretty much perfect. I was watching a video uh, the other day of uh, uh, a guy talking about um, Adobe. Adobe have a new, although it's in beta, I think it's a closed beta, and if you've got the Adobe Creative Suite, you can access it, and it's called um, Voice Enhance or something like that. 
and it's for podcasts, basically. And you can drop an audio file in there with the world's worst audio, and it can have noise and background noise and all sorts of stuff going on there. It can have really bad EQ. You can sound horrible, and it processes it, and it comes back to you, and it fixes everything. And it just sends you back this file, and you sound beautiful. <laughs> and I thought if they can implement that into like a like RTX voices, like so it's in real time, that's a game changer. Oh yeah, yeah. Like the people who use like TikTok and sing into the two dollar headset microphone and sound like they're performing, you know, with a six thousand dollar microphone. No. Yeah. Yeah, and mm. I, that's that's going to be here before you know it. It already exists. They've just got to somebody's got to take that technology and just implement it into things. It's, it'll be amazing. I'm really looking forward to, forward to the future with these sorts of things. And we'll be looking back. We'll be looking back in like five years uh, when we started YouTube at the rubbish we had to go through with audio cables and voice me to banana and go XLRs and be thinking, I just wear me little like, I've got my, Airpo uh, my AirPods in or whatever, just a cheap headset or like wireless earphones and everything will just sound perfect. It'll be great. Oh, jeez. They've got it easy, these kids. Hmm. Well, Brood here says, I absolutely loved hearing Bruno on the podcast. Such an interesting person with an amazing attitude towards content creation and life in general. General, wonderful show this week. Hmm. Thank you, Brood. Yes. And Out of Dutch says, amazing episode with Bruno, such a wonderful person. Oh, and Foxy looks around all shady like, here. And then they link to a feedback, uh, a Minecraft feedback website thing that i can't log into because I'm, I'm on the wrong browser jeez what is it slack what does it say i uh, don't know because as soon as i click it like i get warnings saying this is an is unverified it? thing oh don't yeah click. that's weird <laughs> yeah, i'm not yeah, i'm not nope no nope, the title says clicking. redstone paste so i reckon somebody's gone on mm. and put redstone paste in there so mm. uh, yeah <clears throat> thank, thank you very much dutch appreciate it no <laughs> mm. no <Nope. laughs> Now, moving on from Dutch over here to Robo Rufus says, Hello, podcast crew. I was listening to the podcast, and my total podcast hours is 9,288 hours. I've listened to every episode like three times. Wait, is that just, that can't be just our episodes yeah, on Yeah, just hours. hours. It, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So we've done, to date, we've done 47 episodes. This is episode 48. I did 13 before you guys came around. So that's 60 episodes altogether. And they're on average two hours long, right? So that's 120 hours. And they've managed to listen to 9,288 hours worth. <laughs> what? Hmm. That's, right. that's 154 hours per episode. I'm not, no. it, doesn't, it doesn't seem quite right. No, maybe that's all their total podcast hours, yeah. Well, I don't know, because we've had other ones, like uh, Squirrelicious had about 4,000 hours. We had one last week that was about 6,000 hours, and it, it said listening to the Minecraft Update podcast. So maybe Spotify, you know, maybe it's seconds. <laughs> Spotify is just measuring or it Or auto restarts it when you're asleep. You know, here, listen yeah. to this again. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Crazy. Maybe if I measured that wrong, if, if we've done 60 episodes and each one's two hours, that's a total of 120 hours, right? It would take you five days to listen to back to back. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Whereas 9,288 hours would take you 387 days to listen to back to back. That's over a whole year of listening to constantly. I'm pr I, I think Spotify might have got it a little bit wrong. Uh, uh -huh. I don't think something's not right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Argonaut says, oh, is it me next? Was it you? Not you. Oh, okay. Ha ha, Foxy, you asked if I brought up Pegasus again by mistake, but actually, that wish was from last week. Jessie read it on the podcast, though I believe she misredounced Argonaut. You gave me and my kids a good laugh. You guys are awesome. Also, please tell Bruno he's amazing. He's just gained a new fan. As always, can't wait for next week. So, yeah, we may have we may have read the same wish list for Pegasus twice. Oops. Sounds like you intentionally reread some stuff because you wanted to talk about that redstone stuff again. <laughs> no, Pegasus was already in the week before you agreed to that one. Uh, yeah, so. on the same week that I denied, you know. <laughs> <the post>. mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this is this is why you should be here every week so you can make uh, sure that nobody accidentally put drops things into the good ideas bin on accident. Uh, 
for that. I'm going to take the bin and put it over here under my desk because what I'm going to do. Oh, jeez. Yep. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Then we need to hand it over to me so I can week. stamp it. <laughs> we need mm. some feedback in. Should we let Slack have control of the good ideas bin? Just remember what he said at the beginning of this podcast. At the moment, he's feeling very much like yeah. the Hulk and he's always angry. That means we probably That's won't probably get many perfect, good ideas. <laughs> that sounds like a good reason to let me in charge of it. Yep. You wouldn't Jeez. like me to get angry during the podcast, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the bin. Give me the bin right now. <laughs> Oh, geez. Okay, you can have it until Christmas. There you go. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's going under the desk. Hold on. I'll snap this chain to this. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my welder? Oh, we'll deal with the welder in a little bit. All right. Anyways, moving on to, uh, what is it? Red Monkey next. How yes. Foxy and anyone else who happens to be here. I thought of an interesting <laughs> Patreon perk. What if you entered the highest tier Patreons or something into a drawing and pick one of them to be a guest at one point in the show on the podcast? Thanks for the great podcast. P.S. I am not a P.S. I am not a Patreon, so this is just me trying. This isn't me just trying to be a guest. I uh, enjoy your podcast every week. Hmm. What do you think to that slang? Mm. It's a very tricky one. Because, it's, 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 a, it's a dangerous one, yeah. Yeah. First of all, not everybody that's a patron will have access to be able to record themselves at at a high quality level that we expect to be on the podcast. Uh, but, probably, well, probably. you know, in two weeks, they'll have that thing where they can record in a hurricane and it'll sound good. You know, true. <laughs> Possibly not all of them would want to. And the, the, the biggest issue uh, is the fact that when you you invite a guest on, you don't just invite somebody random. You invite somebody that you've had experience with talking to and recording with before to make sure that you've got some level of chemistry and gel so that the podcast isn't just totally awkward and totally disjointed and you can you know you're going to have a flowing conversation and you know you're going to have you know like-minded people on the podcast that that share similar interests and that, and that way the conversation works if we've got a patron doesn't matter how much of a wonderful person they are they it doesn't it makes the it makes things very awkward and as a result i think the quality of the podcast would suffer from from that and i'm not saying that's because the patrons rubbish they might be really good at podcasting we just it would just be an awkward situation unless we've been in those you know unless we've talked to them a lot in the past previously so i think when you're picking guests for the podcast it really needs to be someone thought through and someone that you've had experience with with talking to and or recording with or something. Is that a fair thing to say, Slack? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty fair. Yeah. That the on the flip side to that, for the bonus shows and things like that that are patron only, I wouldn't have so much of a problem with that because you're not putting that out to the world and you're not you know, every every time a new person comes along to the podcast, you're hoping that the podcast is good enough for them to to subscribe to it on their platform and become a listener. If you, every single podcast you do is important in that sense. It's like putting out YouTube videos. You know, you don't want the first YouTube video for a new viewer to come to, to be a load of rubbish because you just put something out for a joke or just for fun. So I don't think it work on the main thing, but as a bonus show thing where you, you're not, you're just giving it out to people that are already subscribed. I don't think it's too much of an issue. So I wouldn't be opposed to doing that. No. No, no, that seems about right. I, I was I was glancing ahead while you were wrapping that up there because I figured we were pretty much on the same page there. I think I need to read the next one because the one after that looks like it's for you. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so the next one is from Whitebush here. He says, "Hello again, unofficial Minecraft update podcast crew. Just a quick Pegasus thought. What if it's not tameable but showed up randomly, like or even instead of the Wandering Trader?" <sighs> It's right as <laughs> is without a saddle, but flies off when you get off of it, only to return randomly again. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of pointless then, isn't it? Yeah, if you can't tame it, then it's just like, oh, the wandering trader's here. I can fly away, but then I'm stuck wherever I land. Uh, no. Yeah, exactly. What's the point? You got, you got, unless you were just happened to coincidentally be planning on a long journey that you need to flight for. <laughs> it's it's totally pointless. So I, I, I'm sorry, White Bush. Um, I, I don't think it's the best idea. No, no. Mm -mm. Okay, White Bush continues with another piece of feedback, saying, 
Hello again, Foxy specific uh, feedback here. Just watching your frog light video, you mentioned wanting to go in two directions with your videos. What if you continued with Foxy as you have been, but use a character like Big Chicken to do the start from scratch style you were thinking of? Pick one of your characters that you think will be most fun for you, and it may or may not lead to interaction with Foxy later. Whatever you do, don't get burnt out. Continue to have fun with the rest, uh, and the rest will come. Whitebush, for the exact same reason, I don't think it's a good idea to have people you don't know as a guest on your main uh, podcast. I don't think it's a good idea for me to do Big Chicken Mr. Onion solo videos on my channel unless it's a total one-off uh, surprise thing because I don't want people that are coming to my channel thinking, who's this weirdo doing a w rubbish, <laughs> rubbish accent uh, dressed as a chicken? doing silly things uh, to be the first thing they see on my channel. It so. work. It have, you'd have to put a lot into it. Yeah, you'd have to and put a would... lot of time into it because it'd be like Big Chicken. Oh, no, here I am in Minecraft. What do I do? And then Foxy appears like a ghost silhouette. Well, first thing you need to do is you need to make a crafting table. Oh, no. Whew. Yeah, Ooh, have you, could do, mm. you could make a, you could put a lot of effort in and have a lot of fun with that and do something fun like that, but that would require a lot of time, which is something I never have on. And also it would mean that that wouldn't be able to be my main content on my channel. I would still have to produce videos. The idea I had, and this is all, if you're listening to this and you're not sure what this is all about, uh, in mine and Slack's latest video, I was discussing um, when we moved to, when I moved to my main base area on Truly Bedrock, which I will be doing in the new year, uh, I was con toying with the idea of like throwing all my items away, starting from scratch and almost making like a Minecraft guide type set of videos and following along like from the beginning. Um, but then I, the issue was it would be disjointed with my streams uh, because I obviously want to stream from there as well and it would be disjointed from other stuff I was doing, like with Slack, and I didn't want to like have to... I, I we, we even talked about having like two different accounts where I could log in with one and it was Foxy Notel with nothing and doing the guide thing and then logging in with another and it was me normally with all my stuff, but I just thought it'd be too complicated too complex and i'm just going to enjoy playing minecraft because if i put the these pressures on myself i won't enjoy it as much and it will be harder so that was the that's the background for that and yeah i, I just think doing a big chicken style thing would would just be <laughs> be a lot of extra work i haven't got time to do i really like the idea of doing what you said slack but yeah no mm -mm. it'd be a great it'd be a great way like but I can think of a lot of things to use, like how to survive the first night, how to get better tools. I, I can think of a lot of video ideas on what to do with that. And even the editing style, you know, you, you got the, the point of view from like the big chicken character. And then you got the ghostly advisor of like Foxy no -Tail explaining to them what to do. Like you would be explaining to a first time player or a child. But yeah. the amount of time needed just for one episode, if you really wanted it to come out right you're oh you're looking at a lot yeah that either goes back to me trying to control two characters at once on one <laughs> you know and two different devices and record one video or me doing some sort of narration thing which i think could be fun but it's it's i got just i've just got too much stuff on these days to to really do that i'd love to do stuff like that again but unfortunately there's too many other high priority things i just have to do yeah We'll see where the future takes you, though. You never know, right? No, you never know. That does sound like a good idea. But now I got my Just One Book series slack. I don't need all of this rubbish. Throw uh, throw Truly Bedrock and Minecraft out the window. Just sticking with Just One Book. It's the future of my channel, I'm telling you. Okay, I'll start the next survival guide then. Don't worry. Do <laughs> you can't right, call cranium. it survival guide. That's a ripoff. I was going to call no, it, it How good. to Play Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Well, the, the Bedrock Status Survival guide. guide. There we go. The Bedrock Survival Guide. Yeah, because that's not a ripoff at all. <laughs> no, no one else has done that. That'd be fine. No, no, exactly. No. Right. Next, we got Cranier up here. And thank, <laughs> thank you all for what you do for the <laughs> Minecraft community. In reference to all the naysayers and boohooers, because your episodes don't always drop at the same time, I enjoy, seeing, I enjoy seeing multiple viewpoints. It is similar to watching a show or a movie a second or a third time and looking for things that tie together or references to other related movies or etc. Keep doing what you're doing, and I'll keep watching both for entertainment and looking for ideals I can still, I mean, uh, emulate. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we don't do that. We never talk about stealing no. ideas or emulating things like, you know, Survival Guide or anything like that. It's no. fine. 
No, no, uh, we didn't just, make our own S M P, right? Well, no, <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> you can't. You can't copyright S M P. It's against the law. Um, mm. In reference to that, the, uh, the naysayers that boo 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 hoo because your episodes don't always drop at the same time. I, it's 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 close. <laughs> <Yeah>. Generally, <laughs> I mean. If I go Jim, live at four PM or I go live at four AM, I mean it's still in in in, it's, in a day. It's in the twenty four hour window, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's it's generally speaking should be Friday mornings. So last week was a little bit late, and that's only because Bruno sent me the files but didn't actually send me the files. And oh, like I did really, that one time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and then obviously he was asleep all day because he's on. He lives in uh, like South America, so he's miles away. Uh, the the other issue was, and this I don't think it's Bruno's fault at all, but he sent me two audio files for the recording because we had a little break in the middle. And his second one was all out of order. It was really bizarre. Uh, so I, obviously what I normally do is I, I record everything on OBS, uh, like all of our audio together, and that's our combined track. And I put that at the top of my uh, audition, Adobe Audition-like mix, and then I put all of our three audios underneath it and I line them up and that works great because I know when things are in line so when they start cutting and chopping and things I can drag things back in line so I know that it's in line with with how the conversation went uh, so I was doing that and it was absolutely fine and got to because it was a long podcast it was about three hours long got to the point uh, like halfway through where it switched to Bruno's audio second audio track and for the first 10 minutes it was fine then all of a sudden it just changed <laughs> and the bit the next bit I was like, We're, this is from later on. And it was. It was like from the end of the podcast. So I, I cut that, put it at the end of the podcast and tried, like went scrubbing through it all to try and find the bit that went there. And it was, it's like there were six different pieces that were all somehow tied together in the wrong order. So that was a nightmare <laughs> trying to figure all that out. So I, again, I don't think that's Bruno's fault, but that was really bizarre. Really, really weird. So yeah, long, very long odd. Very long edit last week, so it was a little bit late. But that's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. okay. It is what it is, right? Yeah, exactly. Right, it's you again next, isn't it? Or was that? No, mm, it's me. No, the last you. piece of feedback. Do you know what it's like? I thought it was going to be a quick podcast. We're nearly an hour in and we're still in the feedback. <laughs> we're still in the feedback, yeah. D Forsaken says, might you post a schedule of the podcast on the website on the current day and time of the next upcoming podcast? Apologies if I missed where it's posted at. That's a good idea, D Forsaken. I think that's a great idea. Um, again, I would just point out that we're incredibly useless at getting together at the right time, which does have a knock-on effect of when I actually get to edit the podcast and when it comes out. But it should, as a rule of thumb, always come out on a Friday morning. Now, if I have opportunity to edit it in full on the Thursday, then it will come out at Friday morning around about 7 a.m. UK time. That's when it goes live. But then it takes maybe, sometimes it's instant, sometimes it takes an hour or two for the podcast services to pick up the new feed. Uh, if I am late on Thursday, then I might end up editing it like Friday morning as well, which means it probably go up about 10 or 11 o'clock Friday morning. But Generally speaking, it should be out before lunchtime UK time on a Friday, unless something's gone horrendously wrong, or we skip one, or whatever. Or life I should, Yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to put on the website. It will be out at seven a.m. on Friday, and then with loads of messages, goes not out seven a.m. yet, and I'm there furiously editing it because I haven't had a chance to do it on the Thursday. So I should probably put like on Fridays or something. Podcast live on Fridays. That should be fine, right? Each Friday, yeah. Yeah. When Friday? Friday. 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 Yeah. At a time 11 on Friday. 9 a.m. <laughs> 11 59 p.m. As long as it's Friday. Yes. Now, that's the end of the feedback. If you would like to leave us feedback, then you can by emailing us at news at the Minecraft update.com or you can fill in our handy feedback form, which is on our website, which is the Minecraft update.com. Or if you want to be really extra special and handy, you can join our Discord. And, and put it on there, because that makes life a lot easier for me. And you get to chat with all of the other exciting peeps in the Discord who will tell you your ideas are stupid and your feedback sucks. So, yeah, good, this is a very good reason to do it. Do you think, Slank? Yeah, yeah it, sounds, it sounds great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, Slank, Discord, we are. But, yep. We're going into the news, and we have an incredible amount of news this week. It's absolutely insane, the number um, of newses that we've got. 
Okay. There's news. Yeah, well, I, I was scraping the barrel a bit, I'm not going to lie, because we've had, well, Mo Young have all gone on the holidays now. Um, so we've got, no, we've got no snapshots. We've got no betas. We've got no stable releases. But what we did get from, my, from Mo Young, from Minecraft, is five one-hour-long, cozy, relaxing videos that they posted to their YouTube channel. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... They released a relaxing fireplace, which is basically it's just a it's just a like it's almost like one of those looping images, right? So there's a fireplace, it looks all nice and cozy and warm. There's a fox asleep in front of the fireplace, and it would almost be a lovely thing to have on in the background, like on your telly, like at the, in the back of the room during Christmas when you're opening presents and stuff. Apart from the fact in that one, there's a cat wandering around in it that makes the just constantly making stupid cat noises. Why they thought that would be because these are like ASMR things, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why the whole do, point. Yeah. Why? Why do you want a cat? Why do you want meow, meow, <laughs> constantly? <laughs> Shut up! If it would be nice, if it was just the crackling fire in the fog, but they ruined that one. So uh, I won't be putting that one on my TV this Christmas, like. Yeah, no. no. There was the cat. Cozy Beach Escape, which was nice. That was all right. I had a bunch of parrots in that one, which didn't make too much annoying noises. There's a little bit of squawking, but not much. They had a relaxing aquarium, which was... Um, there was a bit of an odd thing in that. So I, I scrubbed through these and watched bits of it. And uh, you know on YouTube now, where you when you start scrubbing through it, it tells you the most watched bits and, and stuff like that. It's got a bit of a graph along the, the bar yeah. at the bottom. So I, I went to the most watched bit, and there's a bit where a puffer fish uh, comes up to effectively the glass on the aquarium. Now, there's no glass on it. It's like it's bumping onto the inside of your TV screen, yeah? So it's a tiny deflated puffer fish comes along, and what seems like quite a long distance away from where the camera or the glass would be, it makes this, like, glass bump noise, and then it inflates. But then after it's inflated and got really big, it then flies right up to the camera and then goes off the screen, and you think... Well, how did it bump on the glass all that way over there, inflate, and then just magically go through the glass? And <laughs> it didn't make any sense. So, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, I, I'll just scrub through to that point. Yeah, I see exactly what you're talking about. It hit the glass. Yeah. It puffs up. Yeah. And now it, it gets even closer. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> They've got relaxing falling mm. snow. Which is that one's not too bad, although I don't know if you want that on in your in your front room because it's going to be you just feel freezing cold. <laughs> and and they've got what they call the relaxing rainy swamp, which would be lovely if it wasn't for all the frog noises, the crickets in the background, quite nice, you know. But the the frog noises, again, it's like the cats. It's not it's not relaxing. So, hmm. So the I've beaten, the orbs, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, I've beaten that piece of news to death. The other piece of news, again, scraping the bottom of the barrel, but something I particularly enjoy is the new Christmas song from Element Animation, which was <laughs> which is about Santa's big sack. And it was absolutely hilarious. And, uh, yeah, they basically Santa's go around stealing children, but singing on uh, singing. <laughs> <laughs> singing his way through and really entertaining the villagers and there's only one villager that's like noticed that all the kids have gone missing and Santa's sack's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it was oh yeah I loved Element and Elevation I loved their style of humour so I really enjoyed that did you catch that one Slack? Grabbing it now and it's just like hmm yeah, it's worth a listen mm. to. It's it's not the best Christmas song in the world, but it's funny. So uh, there will be a link to those in the show notes below if you want to check out any of those videos. But unfortunately, peeps, that is the end of this week's news, which takes us flying headfirst into the bug date. And it's like you've got a bug. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we know how development of this game works, or at least we have a very good idea. Because mm. like every two updates, we see bugs come back from previous updates. Yes. Right. Yes. So you remember there was a time where the leads and fishing poles and everything that it didn't hold in your hand, right? Uh, the lead would hold up like right in the middle of your screen, even though you're walking around, you know, pulling oh, something yeah, on yeah. the lead. Yeah, that yeah. bugs back in dot oh, fifty, good. whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's brilliant. It's, it's a visual thing, but it's annoying. And somebody else was talking about one today. I can't remember what it was while I was on stream. Somebody was mentioning an old bug, and it was around the same time 
that this one was around and it's just like oh yeah this bugs back and it's just like really why how 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 did it, uh, we know how because the people <laughs> working on the people working on 20.1 right now 20 update 2021 20, yeah they're they're running on you know 1.18 code so we'll see 1.18 bugs come back in dot 21 and then we'll see 1.19 bugs come back in you know dot 22 it's just mm. it is weird <sighs> isn't it i, I they mm -hmm. must do that they must be like there'll be a team developing like the next so i uh, we all assume that they go right okay we're developing 1.19.50 now and they finish that and then they go on to 1.19.60 and then they finish that on the 1.19.70 after that. I don't think they do. I think there no. uh, there'll be a team working on 1.19.50 from one version of the game, like yep. whatever was the latest stable release from that. The team yep. working on 1.19.60 will be working on that version of the game and probably from the same version of that one. So whatever bugs get fixed in 1.19.50 are not necessarily going to be carried through to 1.19.60. And then there'll be a team working on 1.19.70 and getting that ready, which will be on that same version again. And it, there seems to be some lack of communication between the bug fixes that happen between those. Well, I'm assuming it's three teams. It might be two. It might be four. Who knows? But there seems to be some lack of communication between those that allows the bugs that get fixed in the first one to follow through to the other one. So 1.19.50 comes out. It's fixed the bug. 1.19.60 comes out. The bugs are back again. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, because Team A decided that they were going to lower the farmland. Team B knew nothing about it, so they got the old code that says the farmland's normal. So yeah. Team A lowers it. Team B suddenly the bugs back, and Team A's like, no, 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 next update, we we fixed it again. And then Team B's like, yeah, guess what? It's back the way we had it again. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's been like this for years, hasn't it? On and off with with different things. Like a bug will go, it'll be gone for an update, and then the next update is back again. Hardest and you're just like. Say furnace again? bug, it's back again. The furnace bug, furnace, back yeah, again. Furnace bug. It's a yeah. prime example of it. This has to be somebody playing with working on old code. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> just not following through those those changes properly. Or, or yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, Jeff, it's Jeff's fault. I think it's Jeff. He must. Yeah. They, they, they finish it and they go, Jeff. Right, we've done all the new work on it, but you know you need to go through put all those bug fixes that was in the other one in there. And he's like, Yeah, no worries. The, you know, trips and over his computer uh, cable. It gets unplugged. Spills his coffee all over the notes that they've given him. And oh, jeez, like, there's yeah, probably and, not much in there. And it leads to that whole, he's like, well, let's turn back on bug 17.4.a. <laughs> let's turn off 15.b. <laughs> let's make yeah. up a new one on 17.4, you know, and yeah, yeah. good job. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, well, let's see you. if Jeff has caused any problems for anyone else in our community Slack. It looks like he's, he's caused problems for three people. Jeez, mm, starting with Tempered. Has. He says, I'm not sure if this was an undocumented change or a new bug, but as of 1.19.50 in Slack, oh, jeez, it's mm -hmm. awful. Magma I cubes. Told you, I told you it was coming. <laughs> well, it was, it's undocumented. Magma cubes can damage and very quickly destroy iron golems. Yep. Iron golems were immune to cubes damage previously. Large and medium slimes also damaged iron golems now, and there is a bug report which has the res resolution works as intended. So thanks, Mo Yang, for making our frog light farm, allowing us to do it all over again, basically. Mm. Told you that one was coming because they changed it with slimes. But when they changed it with slimes, it broke it with, yep. Good, good job. Yep, good. The, the good news is, Slack, I have it on good authority from my YouTube comments that the fix is very easy. It means you get rid of the iron golem and you just fill up the second layer with powdered snow. Because apparently, and I'm not, I don't think I believe this at all, but apparently the frogs won't jump into powdered snow. But even if they do, they will fall out of it again before they actually die of freezing damage. Because they don't, but you it, won't... Go on. Does the damage not... Never mind. Yeah, okay. yeah when, when you get frozen damage, there's that, like, that timer, isn't it, before you actually take damage. So I don't think they'll actually take any damage unless they get stuck in it. They could be right. They may not. You know how we did all that testing before with mobs not pathfinding over a danger block. Yeah. Maybe the frog will not jump into a danger block. Yeah, maybe. But does that mean the frogs are going to be stuck on the spot that they're at, or will they walk around still? I wonder. I don't know. I wonder if they'll walk. Is it? The other thing it is, seem... frog, frogs are small, and small things are supposed to sit on top of powdered snow without sinking through so i wonder if they jump through they're just going to end up above it 
Uh, I don't know. There are many things to be tested on that when that update comes, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, if we ever bother to. Uh, well, the good news is in 1.90.60, that bug will be back. <laughs> we'll skip 1.90.50. It'll be fine. Jeez. Well, speaking of frogs, the big blue frog here says, Ah... This is my second long-term world with a broken M portal. The first world, 1.18, had the portal generate in a square, but two blocks were higher than the rest, so it wouldn't light. This one had a stone wall blocking six of the iframe <laughs> blocks. And yes, I know I can find another stronghold, but this one was the closest. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That really sucks. It's you moving. <laughs> That's one... one point where it's okay to creatively fix it in my mind because it's now someone else could fix it if if i creatively fixed it it would kill the world for me well even just fixing that and then immediately yeah, going it, back it, out of creative I, I i would lose all interest in that world really yeah. the thing generally speaking strong owls are not normally millions of miles away but when you've got a seed and you've got one that's conveniently close it's just really frustrating if it's if it's broken, right? So, uh, I don't know. I'd I'd be tempted to just fi fix that and then just never use creative again. The only problem with that is on bedrock, you're enabling cheats, and then unless you know what you're doing, it's very difficult to uh, to to undo that. So, yeah, the consequences of using creative are not fair. They're not. No, because you can let's let's say the achievement system is more like the advancement system for Java. You can go get advancements in Java. In creative, you know? Is it me? Well, here's a top tip for fixing that in creative, which is not, as far as I'm aware, against the rules. Copy your world. Go into the... Uh, enable creative mode on the copied world. Go into it, fix it. Come back out of it. Go to your world files and just copy the files within the database folder. Not all of them, just the ones in the DB folder into your other one, right? Because the issue, all of the stuff that says you've been in creative is located in the level.dat file. So... If you don't copy That's that and you just come copy the out. the database, you'll be fine. But I didn't tell you that, okay? That's the sneakiest <laughs> way you can go about it right now. All right, anyways, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wildcat Dad 17 says, So I've just done three wither fights on Bedrock and got hit by at least 25 schools and never got withered. I didn't even lose one full heart in three fights. Anyone else seen this? And then, then later posted a uh, another piece of feedback or another bug report, which isn't a bug report. It was saying, mm -hmm. never mind, just check my server settings and someone's updated them. Time to talk to the other admins because it was uneasy. <laughs> so it turns out that one's not a bug at all, Slack. Somebody somebody got bugged by the wither and they're like, yeah, that should make you really easy to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Why don't we think at the same time we do the withers? I mean... Yeah, that was just flick TB over to, like, peaceful for... I oh, know, it'll have to be easy, easy for a easy. minute. Oh, yeah. Easy, nobody noticed. We can do that in the admin panel, nobody ever know. Yeah, yeah, good idea. And third-person <laughs> recording of the weather fight to make it even look more legit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good idea. Or just do it in a creative world, so I can just pretend. I mean, just, uh, just that's the point, just why do we even need to mine? Then we just give ourselves the stuff in. Be fine. Uh -huh. We've done it in creative. What's the difference? I mean, I mean, as long as we record everything in survival, it's it's all legit, right? Hmm. Exactly. Maybe. No, I, th I think, that, that speaking of ruining things, I think if we did that, that'd be it. That'd be done. <laughs> you know people play like that, though. You know there's content creators that play exactly like that. Yeah, when, when I first started doing YouTube, and I was watching things like hermit craft and other like youtubers doing stuff and i was thinking there's no way there's no way they they have got all they've gone to the effort of getting all those items because you know when you do it when you make the videos you realize how time consuming everything is and you're like there's no way they've put in all that effort to do that because all of those ones they used to cut out the bits because at that point, we were early on in making YouTube videos, and you you include everything because you think everything's really important. You don't want to get called out for being a cheat, so you in, you include all the results gathered and everything. But none of these were. They were just like, nah, look, I've just all of a sudden got all the concrete I need and all of the different things, and I can go and build this thing now. And you're going, you, you haven't 
done that. You haven't done that. I think we even had a like this <laughs> this theory at one point between me and you that on Hermitcraft each of the different members just got oh, yeah. like one block that they could have infinite yeah. amounts on when yeah. they <laughs> for their build palette or whatever. But then yeah. over the years of of making videos, I'm like Oh, I cut that out. No, no one wants to see me resource gathering. No, I'll cut that out. And you don't worry about people calling you cheat anymore because you you just do it all, and you know, you know, yeah, you, know you know that exactly. So, you didn't build that Netherrack mountain. Excuse me, I collected over four hundred shulker boxes of Netherrack. I don't care what you say. I did it. Bite me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so then, and you just realize that no one wants to see you mining 10 million netherrack or, or gathering four, 400 stacks of, of concrete. So you just do it in your downtime and you just, you know, you just don't you include watch it. Movies. Yeah. Like, like a project that I'm about to start on the server. We did the math today. Guess how much tinted glass I need, Foxy? Oh, don't tell me. 250 shulkers at least. Jeez. Oh, man. See the other the other side of that is uh, experience of recording, right? <laughs> how how many hours I was? It, this is quite close to home at me right now because I've been moving all of my backups of my, all my old series to a new backup system because my backup system's dying. And um, I, uh, if you go back to season zero, every single episode had many 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 gigabytes of files. Season mm -hmm. one. At the beginning of the season one, I think episodes one to ten, there was like 500 gigabytes of recordings. You get to episode 50 in that, and there's like 200 gigabytes. You get to season two, each episode's got like 50 gigabytes. And it's just because when you're early on, you record everything. Yeah. And then you slowly learn over time. This is no point. It just If I record everything, i got to watch everything to edit it. So you just you record You used to be a full-time recorder. You used to be yeah. a full-time recorder. My second ever episode of TB was a collab with Bloy. Oh, man. And I, me <laughs> and him got on. together to gather up Wither Skulls, and we recorded and played for 12 hours straight. Yeah. And then, of course, Silent came in, and the episode ended as a three-way collab. And when Silent came in, he's like, why are y'all recording on time? Just record in this place. Well, all right, let's do this, and then we go record this clip. All right, yeah. then we do this, and then we go record this clip. And it's like, you telling me I didn't have to record and edit through 12 hours of footage. I could have just done it this way. You learn as you go. That's <laughs> the yeah. best way to put it. Yeah. As I, oh, but, but for me and you, there is no learn as we go. Sorry. Because our comedy goad moments happen randomly. That's why I like doing these long plays with you because that <laughs> is, I record absolutely everything and then just just do minor minor editing with software that I don't even have to go through. I'm not I'm not listening to all that again. I know what went on. I'll just cut the, trim the beginning, trim the end. If there's anything I know we shouldn't have discussed in there, I'll take that out, and that was it. Yeah, there's so, there's a few, but we've gotten better now because now when we want to discuss something, it's like uh, quit recording. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quit recording. Like, if you go back to the quad spawner those days, we, we sat and recorded for 12, 15 hours straight. And then going through all that was a nightmare. Oh. Yeah, and trying to put that into like a 20 minute or 30 minute <laughs> video was a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Especially when we had multiple segments of us just crying in laughter for 30, 40 minutes at a time. I remember yeah. one episode, you're like, I'm done. I can't do no more. I but they were the best stop. bits. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to go. And we, we've had, we've had like, was it season three? We had. A lot of collabs together, which just you, were heavily edited and not much recorded, and they just didn't have that spark. Yeah, like they the didn't have that spark. Did. No, no. For for me and you, it, it's it's long play, and yeah. it ju it just naturally happens. <laughs> yeah, especially when we're doing re <laughs> grindy, repetitive tasks. Jeez. <laughs> Okay, oh, right. We that's the end of this week's bug day. We're now going into a whole new section because I wanted to pad out this Christmas huh? special episode, what? and we're going to ask each other some Christmas questions. So, my first question to you, Slack, is: Are you ready for Christmas? Yeah, yeah, done. Pretty much done. Christmas. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you bought all your presents. You wrapped them all. Uh, no, I just be like, here, here's your gift. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Give me mine. I don't want to wait till Christmas. I understand. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. What well, about I, you? I think I'm just about ready. I bought everything. Uh, I think uh, it was a struggle because people had to buy for, but I've got everything and I'm going to be wrapping those up on Christmas Eve when the kids are out with their grandparents. So, uh, yeah, 
I, yeah, I that's where I'm just the opposite. I'd ask you directly. I'd be like, what do you want for Christmas? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't do surprises mm-hmm. or anything. They, everyone knows what they're getting. I just you still wrap like, it. You get $100 worth of something. What do you want? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> okay. What would you like for Christmas slack from, you know, it doesn't have to be from anyone in particular, but if you could have anything for Christmas, what would it be? Uh, to spend Christmas with Jen and stuff. Jen and Bump. Yep, Jen and Bump. Oh, yep. oh that'd be nice. But that's Aww. why we did Thanksgiving, because I wouldn't ask her right now, because yeah. she's been making the trips right now. I wouldn't ask her to spend Christmas away from her family or away from Firespawn. That, that's no. her, her current, you know, her son. I don't want to say his real name, so we just call him Firespawn. The current son. <laughs> yeah. You know Sorry. what I mean. Sorry. I know what you mean. Mean that, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I know no. what you mean. I know what you mean. It's difficult. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, that's a that's a lovely thought for Christmas. Um, I, I suppose I should answer that myself as well. But uh, well, it leads me on to the next question. Slack is: Have you bought yourself any special early, like in inverted commas, Christmas gifts? Did you go? Ah, oh, it's Christmas coming. I'm going to get myself one of these. Yeah, I bought me an airline ticket to the UK coming up next year. Whoop whoop! Nice, good. Because uh, I plan on coming over there when baby's born, but yeah. I need to make the international flight first, just so. I- because I have to go through other airports and stuff, and I've never flown internationally. So I'm taking a smaller trip around February, March, somewhere in there, for just about a week or so before the long trip when baby's born. So Nice. nice. That's what Test I bought me. Was a, yeah, yeah, to well learn the airport and everything like that, because I'm not an anti-people person, but I'm an anti-people person. So suddenly getting in an airport with thousands of people is, might be a little questionable for me. <laughs> yeah, you might want to have a hold of your anger issues by then. I'm just saying there's one place to make you angry. It's airport security, airport check-in, airport. Oh, geez, the whole lot is just designed to irritate you. Oh, man. Yeah, good luck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> Okay, well, I've been, uh, I may have bought myself a few little presents uh, for Christmas. I I got myself uh, a new um, network storage system because my other one's dying and I don't want to lose all my files. I got myself a Stream Deck Plus uh, in replacement for my Go XLR. And I. What are you doing with that Go XLR there? I mean, uh, I'm keeping it just in case for now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I, it might it might go up for sale at some point, um, and I've I've ordered a new a second broadband line that I wasn't expecting to do uh, because I because I'm hosting like the odd website and things from my from my own home network. I don't like it all being on the same one I'm using for streaming or watching TV because. It, it'll, it'll either slow down people like being able to listen to the podcast as that's all hosted at mine now or it will slow down my streams which it did last week uh, i had a problem <laughs> streaming it said my streaming uh, quality wasn't going out well enough. yeah you yeah that stream was pretty rough mm-hmm. yeah so so i've got i've ordered an, an entire second line um which means i'll be able to separate the two things and, and it's actually going to give me a little bit more upload as well so that'll be lovely to have next year so so that's good so yeah, that's that's what I've done for myself because I'm spoiled. <laughs> what would you like for Christmas? If you could add anything to this is the wish list, basically, Slam. If you could add anything uh, you like for Minecraft, what would it be? You could wish away any bug, or is this add in? Which one? Oh, have sorry, done? yeah, I've done the wrong one first. Oh, geez, I've ruined my segue. Pretend I didn't uh, say that. If you could wish away one bug for Christmas, what would it be? <laughs> I don't know. You go first on that one, because now I'm struggling. Hmm. Yeah, no, I know. I didn't want to answer that one either. It's uh, we we talk about bugs all the time, but I can never think about ones that particularly irritate me. Um, hmm. Can that go in conjunction? Could, if you could wish for one feature and wish away a bug, can can we yeah, do this okay. as a two for one? Take yeah, away trident killers and give a sweeping edge. Oh wow! You would replace trident killers just for sweeping edge. Hmm. Wow! I know I'm okay. I'm I'm horrible, right? <laughs> I I mean, I I quite like the old just stand there and chop. I do, but my my issue with that isn't 
that sweeping edge is bad. I like sweeping edge. It's that our mobs don't have, you know, we don't get enough mobs to actually utilize it. Like if you're running at a witch farm, you're getting one witch at a time. And if you, even if you're using just a sword mm. without sweeping edge, you're killing the witches faster than they're spawning. <laughs> I know, exactly. It's, so it's, it's sweeping... one problem that leads to another. So sweeping edge kind of pointless on that one. So I would, I would take away trident killers, give us sweeping edge and more mobs spawning. Then I'm, 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 all, I'm all on board Higher with that. Higher density scales. Or, or change the mob, global mob cap. Come on, 200? Come on. I don't think that I don't think the two the global things ever been an issue as I'm sure it's just density check that's our problem. Well, give, give both, give both, give give more global, give more density, give scale yeah. slider, please. <laughs> yeah, so I I would love that density uh, scale sliders, and obviously we've always always asked for this being able to see entities at a distance slider as well. So yeah, just sliders. That's what I want. Slide. Put it, That's my put it in a JSON place for so Minecraft. we can make our own packs. Yeah. Put, it, put, put it in behavior pack. Just please, make JSON it, make file it that we can edit. Yeah, if they make it data driven so we can edit it, perfect. I'll have that. Yeah. That'll do. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, that brings us nicely into the wish list, which uh, I haven't written down anything of you because we've no, just done it, I guess. No, we just did it, yeah. But we got a bunch from everybody listening right now. Did wow, because we? we're like, oh no, no it's the people from last week. Oh, okay. We're, we're not live. Oh. No, okay. not this week. Next week's live. Out of Dutch, so at, at some whatever time we choose. <laughs> we should really make a decision. Okay. Out of Dutch says a separate equipment slot for Elytra. Hmm. What do you think, Slack? Elytra and chest plate at the same time? I've always been torn on that one. Half of me wants it and half of me doesn't. <sighs> I feel like it, it, I feel like you need to sacrifice something to fly. Do you? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's it's been the way forever. Would it make any difference to the game if see there's a thing called the end the end game, right? The end game stuff they get, the end game loot, the end game armor, the end game weapons, the end game elytra. And the elytra is supposed to be at the end of the end game. So realistically, although we don't, we should have already got our all of a good armor before we go off to the end to get the Elytra. So that's, in one way, just a bolt-on, right? We've gone through all that effort, and that's the last bit of effort we need to go through in order to really uh, empower ourselves. Would playing with the Elytra on, and or even just have, like, protection enchantments on the elitra instead of dead of your chest plate would that be an issue would it change the game would it make it less interesting no not for me no i don't think it would i've always been against this this was my stance when i first read it was no i don't like it uh but i think i, I don't think it'd be a big deal i don't think it'd be a problem really hmm. no hmm. I'm not going to say you can go in the good ideas bin because we're both on the fence on it, and obviously I don't have control of that uh, anymore because you stole I, I, it from I, me. Okay, I got a, I got a compromise here. Okay. Okay. Putting on the elytra is less hearts, right? We know this. Yeah. What if you could put more enchantments on the elytra then? Yeah, like protection and stuff like that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If I could enchant yeah. my elytra with my protection or fire protection or uh, yeah, then I'd be fine for it. And, and, like, be able to put netherite on it so it doesn't burn in lava would be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To tip the wings. Yep. Because yep. you're going through the effort to mend them, and you're going through the effort to make rockets to fly with them. So I don't I don't see the necessity for it to, oh, you're weaker if you've got your elytra on. Well, I still want netherite-coated fly... shulkers to, that don't burn up in lava. What's the alternative, right? You either you wear full armor with full protection, and you don't, and you just nothing can hurt you effectively anyway because you're pretty much OP at that point. Or you wear your elytra and you just fly off and despawn everything if it's a problem. So you know, <laughs> there's no advantage, is there? Yeah. How many times have we done it? We're at nighttime, we're on the ground. We don't have a bed. There's a mob there. Okay. Well, bye. I'm just gonna fly away. I'll show yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm I've I haven't got a problem with that one at all, Dutch, but I don't I think there would be a lot lot of uh I think there'd be a lot of anger if we put that in the good ideas bin from the from the outside peeps. What do you think, Slack? Well, they could let us know via feedback. 
Oh, yeah, let us know. But in the feedback next week by doing the stuff that I said earlier, and I'll tell you again in a minute. <laughs> okay, next wish list. Uh, the Big Blue a Frog here says, I want Bedrock to have maps like Java. One of my old worlds, I marked villages with a map facing north, portals with a map facing east, and bases facing west, and points of interest facing south. But I'd love to be able to just label a banner or something and have it show up on any of my maps. Yeah, that's parity stuff that I think is, that would be a nice thing to have in the game. Yeah, parity that's overdue. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know how hard that will be to implement. I've no idea how, how the map system works on Bedrock other than that it's totally broken and ruins your game. But apart from that, I don't know how it works. So, yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah, okay, so that one, I'll put that one in the uh, good ideas bin then, right? Higher of the Night says, I would like an expansion or extension enchantment that would add a row to ender chests up to level three. The other option would be naming an ender chest would make it its own thing, separate inventory. So if you name another exact same name, then the player can access it just like a normal ender chest. Ender chest renamed Knight's Building Materials. Any other chest named that will allow me to access that inventory. It would be empty for everyone else. Normal ender chests still operate as normal. Hmm. It's quite complicated. That feels overly complicated. Yeah, but I've played a lot of mod packs that have diable ender chests where you've got like basically three uh, colored slots on top and you can you can make combinations. So you can have like red, white, white will only interact with other ender chests that are red, white, white. Or you could have like green, yellow, blue, and that would only interact with other ender chests that are green, yellow, blue. And the advantage of those ones is that they also work with hoppers as well. So you can make really intricate and interesting storage systems from like one place in the world to another just by dying your ender chest. And I love that. I really, really enjoy working with that. But I think that would be way too over the top for the base game of Minecraft. Well, um, I'll tell you right now that Jesse would veto this. So if we're wanting to get this in a good idea, Ben, I'm actually sewed on it and we'd have to pass it this week like y'all try to pass stuff on the round. Oh, the other... And, the the problem with leveling up ender chests to level three, as much as I'd love that, I'd love like a double ender chest. That's great if you've got a double ender chest in one location and you filled it full of stuff. What if you then go somewhere else and just put a single ender chest down? What happens to the other half like chest with the stuff? Is it just un inaccessible? According to Jeff, game code it's gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what I'm worried about. <laughs> just disappear. I um, accidentally opened the ender chest as you broke half of it. You just ate all my diamond blocks. Yeah. Mm. Oh, slack. What are we adding in the good idea has been there then? Diable, hoppable. Diable, separate ender chest. So if I die at red, I can only access the red stuff via red ender chest. Could you imagine 16 different colored ender chests all yeah. with their own inventory storage? I'm sorry. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, but what about hopperables? I don't see the point of hopperables. I could see where I would potentially use it, but wouldn't you always need a second account for that? No, no, because it's the same account. So, okay, let's let's say let's say you're in your your base. You're in loaded ticking area of your base, and you've made a a sheep farm, right? So you have your sheep farm running into an ender chest that is blue, 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 green, for instance. And then at your storage system, you have a blue, blue, green ender chest sat on top of a hopper filtering into your storage system. So all the walls get in, goes straight. Okay, from okay the... I get it now. So you can hopper in and out. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. We... I like it. Yep. Not too OP. Well, it's it's way overpowered, but <clears throat> I like it. I like okay. it for farms, so I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great for farms. Okay, brilliant. Right, we've done that then. Nice. Jobs go jobs are yeah. good. And Just don't yes. tell Jesse that we approve this one. Let me slide. Here, let me get my stamp out here. Hold on. There's one. There's the other. Yep. Put them in the yep. File the way. Yep. Nice. Okay, next. Excellent. Robo Rufus Ooh. is up next here and says, I wish there was no AI mobs in Minecraft. It would make testing my texture packs a lot easier. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. That would be great. Uh Alternative to that, test them in block bench, or just give a, a mob slowness like a hundred and it'll just be stuck on the spot. Or run a command block that just TPs any mobs that's not the player to the to the location that they're at. So just tilde, 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 and they'll just be stuck on the spot. So but it would be nice if we had that no AI tag. I would like that. So I wouldn't mind that going in the good ideas bin because that would save a lot of workarounds. 
stamp. That's in. Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh dear. Excellent. Good. Right. Tron says, I would love to see an edition where you could have mossy variants of Blackstone and Deep Slate. Yes. I don't know if it's. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible, but maybe a glow liking variant would be cool too. Yes. Like, what, what like combining blocks with glow lichen to make slightly glowing. Think, think, mossy of, think of Gilded Blackstone. Now think of it with glow. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh, well, what we I don't understand what we're having here. Are we having mossy blackstone and deep slate? Or are we having? Yeah, because that doesn't exist. One, we don't have that. Yeah. Okay. So we have well, mossy yeah. versions of those. You got you got cobbled deep slate. Why can I not have mossy cobbled deep slate? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, and, what about uh, how does the glow lichen thing work? Think. Well, you can't craft the gilded blackstone. So what if you could find, you know, glowy deep slate, you know what I mean? That that was like the Gilded Blackstone. Well, isn't the like, I don't know if it's in real life. I think it is. Um, certain, maybe it's just in games or movies and I've just seen too many of those. But like, you know, when you're, you're in a game and you go to like a glowing mushroom, uh, glowing mushroom biome, that bioluminescent stuff, um, that's kind of like a moss that glows, right? Yeah, I know yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the stuff. The stuff in the water. There's definitely algae that's bioluminescent, yeah. and that that's real life. That actually glows. But in, I'm sure there's some sort of moss that can do that as well. Uh, oh, maybe yeah, that's I just. Guarantee. Maybe it's not real life, but yeah. So what if you could combine moss and glow lichen and a mossy, a, a cobbly block to make the mossy version emit a little bit of light as well? Yeah. So. Mossy light versions. Good idea. Stamped and stamped and placed in and placed in. See? Look, how many are we getting today with me in charge of this, right? Oh, oh, you're in a very good mood, Slack. So this is amazing. We should, you should do more podcasts. Obviously, it brings uh, the happy side of you out. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of happy sides, the, the next one's a book here, okay, from Cricket the Wise here. This says, I wish... When you loose an arrow with flame one and it lands on a block, the arrow would act as a small temporary light source with maybe a three to five block radius. It is strange seeing a small flame a flicker in the darkness and nothing illuminated around it. After posting this, I can already hear Foxy saying, well, if you didn't miss, you wouldn't have to see the flicker, mate. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know. I did miss a lot lately, but it would be a nice anyways if you did it on purpose, right? Yeah, flame bows, if they're going to have fire on, should set fire to the block they hit and light and uh, nether portals, in my mind. Ant fires that have fire on them should catch <laughs> things on fire. Yes, it on should. On that same logic. I totally agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. But then also, when the food drops out, it should burn in the fire and disappear, but it doesn't because it's a campfire, and if it did that, it would ruin the way the campfire worked. <laughs> It sounds like a game problem, not a factual problem. We can't add sharks to the game because they eat other mobs and it's too realistic. But we can't. Mm, never mind. Mm. Yeah, it's it's the same as the scaffolding problem. Scaffolding is inherently broken because it doesn't follow the rules of Minecraft. Campfires are the same. They're inherently broken because they don't follow the rules of Minecraft. In Minecraft, the rule is if something goes in fire or lava, it's dead. But campfire is the the, the rule breaker <laughs> because you cook things on it, and if you <laughs> if you like put all your food on it, cooked it on it, it all popped off and went in the fire, it all be gone. So. Well, then yeah, you need think, to set it up on Hopper to, so you don't have that issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there needs to be an ex well, there needs to be a way of getting around that. So I, I don't see, uh, campfires aside, why if you've got an arrow that is on fire, why it doesn't, you'd have to have fire spread on maybe, but why that wouldn't catch fire to the block it hit or why that wouldn't like. There you go. That's I, the answer to the campfire if fire ticks on. Fire tick on. Oh, no, no, that's the answer to the cap. Sorry, I thought you were telling me to write down a good idea. No, yeah. Well, no, th this is part of the good idea. If fire tick is on, then your flame bow can light things on fire, and, you know, the light source thing is a bonus. Yeah. Same with campfires. If fire tick is on and you stand on one, you're going to burn. Yes, that, that's, that should be the thing. Yeah, but then it's still cheaty mob farm, though, isn't it? Cheaty cooked food farm. <laughs> well, no, we agreed that if fire tick's on, it would burn up the item then. But then your campfire's broken, which is a good early game source of cooking food. 
Really? Do you use a campfire? Uh, I'm sure some people do. <laughs> I think your brain and brother still goes to a furnace, even though the campfire <laughs> would be the logical way where you wouldn't even need to waste your coal. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I don't know if I can put that one in the good ideas bin. Slack. I don't know if I. I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna to have to veto that one. Okay. Campfire right. is just too complicated. Too broken. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, cricket. Okay. I tried for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll have to. No, you've got the low, the bow thing. <laughs> That's fine. It's just the campfire thing's the problem. Well, I mean, we could we could halfway good idea that, couldn't we, with the the fire tick? Yeah, we'll, we'll like, do the what you said. Like, if fire yeah, ticks yeah, on, then the flame bow okay. lights blow blocks and portals on fire. Stamp sealed in the bin. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. Where are we at? We're up. To uh, red, red monkey. monkey. I think I think this is me. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Red Monkey Eight says, "Hey, podcast crew, I have a fun idea for the wish list. How about two new mobs and a mob variant?" We could have a lizard with slack skin and a new fox variant without a tail and a new NPC named Jesse. I'm sure you would all want to meet yourselves in Minecraft. Uh, if no. I was already in the game, I wouldn't be able to play it. Yeah, exactly. No. Mm -mm. No, no, thanks. What Sorry, Red Monkey. What do you think about Red Monkey? No, no. We're hard veto <laughs> both of these right now. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we got the Kentucky Hick here says, with a wish list idea, vertical flowing water could combine to form water sources. Often in the ocean, I end up with patches of flowing water after digging. Wish there was a way if water sources were above flowing water, it would turn them into source blocks. I immediately want to say yes, because it's really annoying when you make a, like when you're making a, a, a swimming pool, effectively, like a, a bowl full of water, you have to fill in every single layer, right? And if you I want to make say a bubble yes, column, but it feels so overpowered though, because the bubble column. All right, so I can go up to the top of the world height. That was yeah. three hundred and twenty now, or three hundred nineteen. I can put one water source there, and that yeah. all turns into solid water. That's too cheaty. Why? Why is that cheaty? What difference does it make? Because it's cheating. It's, it's always been cheaty. Cheaty. You know, that's it, not it, why. It doesn't make any difference to the game. If you, no, what? It's, it's stupid that you've got to go down there, take away the soul sand or the magma block because, you know, you can't plant kelp on it and then plant kelp up the middle all the way. Why? Oh, it's I agree. Stupid. I agree. Okay, so, all right, all right, all right. Here's a compromise then. If you put a bubble, if you put magma or soul sand, boom, it turns it full source. I'm fine with that. But if it's normal blocks or whatever and you're digging in the ocean to get the gravel out because you don't want to go to a mountain or gravelly shores or whatever... Then no, you got to pay the consequence for it. It's not going to auto make it full. Really? Oh man, I, I think the opposite. If we're going to have a compromise, that, that I was going to say that's the thing that somebody mentioned uh, in the response to this on the Discord was that's great, but what if you're trying to get rid of water in an area with sponges and it just keeps dripping down, <laughs> making oh, water sources everywhere? Um, yes. No, I'm suddenly against this idea. I forgot about <laughs> no draining ocean. Nope. No, Sorry, you'd Kentucky have to Hick. do it from the top down. So yeah. unfortunately, Kentucky Hick, while I really love the idea of not having to, like, yeah, of water just filling itself up, I would love it, but it's, it's no, sorry, no, can't mm -mm, happen. No, 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 bad, bad, horrible. Delete that comment, it never happened. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're up. You next. No, I just did right. Kentucky Hick. Did you? Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, Sorry. It's uh, it's eight, nine minutes past midnight. It's like I'm falling asleep. Lemon Aiden says, Hi, I'm Aiden. How about enchanted golden carrots? We already have golden carrots and apples. Have the golden version and enchanted golden version. No. 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 You get regular golden, then you get enchanted golden. No, leave enchanted golden. That, that makes the notch apple special. Yeah, well, the thing is, right, the, the golden apple gives you a buff. Golden carrot doesn't. So an enchanted golden carrot, that's just what well, that even more and you can't well, craft them enchanted anyway. golden uh, Yeah, exactly. So no. <laughs> so, exactly. So, like no. An hour Make of it, saturation rather than ten minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd be sold for that. But that takes us back to the whole potion update. Yeah. Dipping food and yeah. Mm. And considering saturation is invisible, you don't know when it's worn off anyway, so <laughs> Mm. Yeah, you do. Your hunger bar stops doing the whole wavy thing. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I don't think we need enchanted golden carrots. I think I think we're fine with just normal no. ones. No, that'll be in part of the food update, and we'll discuss it then. Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. Okay, so Lemonaden is here again with another one that says, "What if you could hatch the Ender Dragon egg, and there is a baby dragon that you can ride? 
It can't break blocks, but it can shoot fireballs and deal some damage. We've talked about having rideable dragons before, and I think we all like those ideas. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they're already in the good ideas bin. So, yeah, so whoever manages the good idea bin, check that before we justify this and let us know in next week's thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know whether... The problem with that is it's great for single player, but it's no good on a server who gets the dragon. So unless they make the dragon drop an egg every time, which I think it should, to be fair... I'm pretty sure that is how it works currently in the game. I think it's broken on Bedrock. Really? Every you time you, do that? I'm pretty sure right now if you resummon the dragon and kill it again, you get another egg. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a bug, clearly. But if, <laughs> <laughs> if that was how it worked intentionally, then yeah, I wouldn't have a, a problem with that because at the moment, other than getting the end portal gateways to go to the end islands, which are kind of pointless because you can either bridge across there or fly across there if you've already got your leecher, there's real no, really no advantage of killing the Ender Dragon. So, I mean, I suppose the the advantage of killing the Ender Dragon is you can get back to the overworld without killing yourself. So... <laughs> yeah, so that's a big advantage, especially on, like, a hardcore world or something, yeah. Yeah, but you get Ender Chests in the in the end, so you don't even need to, you know, if you're, yeah, okay, if you're playing hardcore. But, like, if you're really precious about your deaths, maybe. But realistically, you don't need to be. You just you can just yeet yourself into the void and, and get yourself your Ender Chest at the other side. So, I don't know. It would be nice to have a a, re, a more more of a good reason to fight the Ender Dragon, which obviously is the Ender Dragon egg, but that doesn't suit multiplayer world. So, yeah, I'm happy 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 with that. It's like, um, I'm 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 gonna say no on this one. Rude. Yeah, I know. I know that the the good ideas are wearing off and the anger's returning. I'm just. Oh man, uh, I, just, I tried lemonade. And I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, is this is it me for Tyler it's B? You, it's you for Tyler B, yeah. Okay, Tyler B says, this is a small thing, but it would be a great idea. I'm glad you're so confident, Tyler. We, we, we Apparently, I Slack, we are prepared. We need a great ideas bin. All right. Not just All a good right. ideas bin. We're going into great ideas territory here. We're hoping well, in a whole new bin. Jeez. All right. He says, I would like to have the ability to, if you don't have an entity in the lead you are holding and you have it attached to a fence post, you can attach it to another fence post. This would be great for adding decoration. Or maybe they add a new lead, but you can connect it to the side of two blocks and hang things from it. These things would be smaller than they actually are. <laughs> I bring that up because you can hang sea lanterns or glowstone blocks and they would emit light, i.e. Christmas lights in Minecraft. Um... I think before you added that second paragraph in there, I yeah, I think being able to attach a lead to to two like physical things like two boats or two fence posts, that'd be great. I'd be happy with that. Or just two animals. That'd be really funny. You know, attach the lead to one cow and then attach one to a chicken. Why not? Yeah. The first part out of the I was sewed on, then then they then they, they took it too far. So but yes, good idea there. And then so for what you don't no. know, he's breaking the comment apart, and the top part's getting a yes, and the bottom part's getting a hard no. Right, yeah. So, Stamp that there we side. Go. Throw that one. Throw the other one away. Yep. All right, anyways. Yeah. It's not a great idea, though. We're not having a great idea, it's been. Sorry. No, it's, it a... goes in the good idea. Not a great, yep. <clears throat> yeah. I'll tell you what is a great idea, though, is DJ Chris is back. Been a while since oh. I heard from DJ Chris. Let's see what DJ yeah. Chris has to say this week. I wish voice chat was in. No. They want voice chat in Minecraft. I'm, I'm gonna. No. Mm -mm. Why not Slack? No, no, it's horrible. Why? Because my experiences with proximity chat for Java Edition were a nightmare. No, no, no. It doesn't have to be voice uh, proximity. Just, just normal voice chat. No, because even the option to turn off text chat doesn't even work right. No. And I'm, I'm going to be recording or playing. I don't need to hear somebody come up with their microphone while they're screaming and yelling with their mom and. Want to know why their dog has not been outside? No, 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 yep. no. I don't want to hear people. I don't want to hear people on the other side of the world who are, you know, building a chicken cooker. No, no, no. Okay, but Slack, you have like I totally agree with you. By the way, and there are very, very many good reasons why it doesn't exist. Uh, not just because Mary Young are lazy and they can't be bothered. There's lots of legal reasons uh, it doesn't exist, but. We we need to put all of those things aside, Slack, and think of the kids. Kids love being in voice chat with total randoms and strangers. You know, you, know, you get kids playing on their Xboxes, joining parties with a load of weirdos they've never met. 
kids going on their iPads and joining voice chat in these Roblox and speaking to kids they've never met. And they love hearing oh, yeah, other kids. I especially kids love it when them. I'm playing like Call of Duty and some nine year old joins the lobby saying more profanities <laughs> than a sailor. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. So we need to think of the kids here. No, there is a definite no. Take voice chat <laughs> away from everything. Yeah. I agree. No, the 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 real the the good reasons why it doesn't exist. Okay, so uh, one of the big complaints is that there's no voice chat on Nintendo Switch, uh, and that is because Nintendo Switch is primarily aimed at younger people, and uh, Nintendo were very very strict on what they will allow to have voice chat. They even have an, uh, their own Nintendo app for your phone which gives you voice chat in certain games that they deem necessary, and it never gets updated. It's rubbish. It doesn't work very well. Xbox and PlayStation both have, like, the equivalent of parties, which you can join with your friends, and it's all monitored and sorted through Xbox. It's all very... It's done in a way to ensure that you're not just mixing in with total strangers on servers that you don't know. You're only joining in with friends or friends of friends, depending on what your settings are. Uh, and obviously on PC, well, there's not really much point because there's so many other ways of communicating with people that are more convenient, like Discord or Skype or Teams or Zoom or whatever you you happen to enjoy working with. So I think legal reasons alone, it would they wouldn't be able to add it onto Minecraft for the Switch or the Xbox or the PlayStation because those consoles would have a problem with that. Pretty sure Apple would have a problem with it being on the iPhone, and I'm pretty sure Android, uh, Google will probably have an issue with that being... Uh, maybe Google wouldn't. I don't know about Google. But yeah, um, that's why it can't be in the good ideas bin. Yeah, no. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, DJ Chris. Okay, that is the end of today's wish list. If you wish there was something in Minecraft, or if you've got a bug that you want to report, or if you want to ask us a question, then you can email us at news at the Minecraft update dot com, or you can fill in our handy feedback form, which is on our website, or you can join the Discord and ask us there. Ask us there. There's different channels for each of the different things to keep it nice and easy. So you can you could make a wish, then hop in the questions channel and ask a question, then you could hop in the feedback and drop some feedback and. It would be wonderful if you did that, so please do. Right, Indeed. Slack, it's questions time, and okay. we've got three, four questions. Okay, are All you right. ready for this? <clears throat> I'm ready. Mm -hmm. The first one apparently is for me. Oh. Well, and three, it makes three, me feel good. Three. Okay. It's from Out of Dutch, who says, Foxy, as a content creator, and in my eyes, an audio specialist. See, I really <laughs> like this guy already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> wow! Thanks, <I'm> Slack. <laughs> what post-processing filters effects do you find to be most important for clear vocals? Also, how do you determine the proper volumes for vocals, background music, game noise, and sound effects? I can never seem to get mine set quite right, and I'm wondering what I'm overlooking. Uh, oh, geez, practice and patience uh, is the is the key to this one. Um, there's, there's no very... universal answer, though. No, there isn't. It's totally subjective. But there's a very, there's a very, there's a couple of rules that you can follow. For your overall loudness, you can get a loudness meter. In fact, there's one built into uh, DaVinci Resolve. There's one built into Adobe Premiere. Your audio from your final piece should average minus 16 LUFS. Uh, and that means it's projecting at the right loudness for YouTube to not feel like it's too quiet or not feel like it's too loud and that's the sort of standard that's what we do the podcast at that's what i do all my videos out and that does that that's not volume that's how loud things appear so um you can basically once you've done all of your mixing in your audio tracks you put a, a limiter on there and you adjust the gain and the limit so that you're not peaking everything but you are hitting that right loud, loudness level the way to get your music to not sound too loud, and this is something that I often forget to do, and this is also something that exists in DaVinci Resolve as an actual option, although you can do it just with a volume knob on your headphones, is to dim the music so or dim the audio. Turn it right down so you can just hear you talking. If you can hear the music more than you can hear you talking or the audio is garbled because it's so quiet you can't hear yourself, your music's too loud, you should be able to hear yourself clearly even on a really, really quiet volume 
and barely hear the music at all. And then when you turn it up uh, to a normal level, the music should be audible and not too quiet, but the volume, the speaking volume shouldn't be too loud. So that's totally subjective and takes a lot of getting used to doing, but that's the easiest way to do that in my mind. But what do you do, what do, you do for that, that slack? Oh, yeah, for the music, it's exactly the same. Uh, if I tune into like a Foxy No Tail stream or anybody's stream and they're playing music, if I got the volume at 100%, I expect to hear the music and I expect to hear them. If I turn the volume down to like 25%, I only want to hear the content creator. I do not want to hear their music. And if you can nail yeah. that, you've nailed it in my book. My my music, I generally have at about minus 30 to minus 35 yep. decibels in my mixer. So that's the average sort of level that it's coming through at uh, in, in my, my videos and my streams. Yeah, in my video, when the song first kicks in, depending on the moment, if it's a funny moment or something like that, I may start the music at like negative 20 with a fade in. Yeah. Just so yeah. You, you know it's there. It's I try to use music to set the scene sometimes. Exactly. Like if there's a comedy skit or something serious is about to happen. So I'll do that. And then about three to four seconds later, I'll start dropping it from negative 20 to negative 30. But I'll do that over like a 10 second window. So it fades it, you know, that, that's, that's my goal in that regards. Yeah. For your, for your, that will only work though. That level will only work if your microphone volume is correct. Uh, and now this this is loudness and volume again. So there's two different things, volume and loudness. Volume is, if you're looking at the waveform of your audio, volume is how high the peaks are and how how yep. how how big it is, basically. So you can have something really loud that's touching zero dB at the top and the bottom, but it's not actually very loud. It's actually quite quiet, but your waveform is massive. Okay, so it's got a lot of gain, but there's not much loudness to it. So loudness is a different thing. Loudness is how how actually loud it seems. And you can have something with a really small waveform, like a really low down one with a low volume that's still very loud. Uh, and and this, this comes down to things like compressors and filters that's on your microphone or that you, you're post-processing. And you want your loudness for your vocals to be around about minus 18 LUFS. And you want your and, and when it's at the right level, if you've got your peaks right, your peak should be hitting minus six decibels. So yeah, if your volume I'm... is too high or too low, your your six decibels is not going to mean anything to you. So aim for the loudness on that one. Also, if you're boosting if you're adding gain to things and you do have a lot of volume on your audio, as in your your waveform's high or low then you need to put a limiter on there to stop it hitting zero so you don't get the peaks and the crap, uh, crackles at the end. So bring your limiter down to about minus one decibel just so that you you guarantee you're not getting anything going over that and causing a crackle. But in terms of post-processing filters and effects, the most important one is probably a gate to get rid of uh, or to cut down breathing noises and to cut down background noise. Well, it's not really background noise. It's the noise in between words, I guess, that you're cutting down with that. A compressor to bring down that volume and increase the loudness and make sure that your your spoken audio, even when you go really quiet and even when you speak really loud, is roughly the same. So you're not dealing with massive, big, peaky bits of audio and then really, really low bits because that's really hard to manage with a gate or a compressor or not a compressor wow. with things like that afterwards. And then just a bit of EQ just to make you sound. Take the middle out is the regular thing to do. Around about minus 500 decibels, drop that down. Depending on your microphone, maybe bump up the low end a little bit around about 200 decibels and then around about 6,000 decibels to give a little bit of presence. And that's it, really. You know what's sad is four years ago, I wouldn't have understood a word you just said there. <laughs> and I was, following was every bit of that. I was following every bit of that in my mind. Like I was sitting there doing I was like, yep. And then you would explain something. I'd be like, I do it a little bit different, but we get the same end result. Like you explain yeah. backwards of how I would try to explain it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. The, 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 order, the order is really important as well. So you should have your negative effects, things that are taken away from the audio or detrimental to the audio first, like a gate or a noise filter. If you've got a lot of noise on there, you want to get yourself a noise fil a noise plugin a noise VST. There's a lot of, most apps have some sort of noise filtering built in, but you can, you can get free ones. Uh, so you want that one first, then you want your gate, then you want your 
additive stuff. So you want, I, I generally tend to do EQ before compressor, but I know a lot of people do compressor, then EQ last. And I then usually right. compress, then EQ, yeah. Do you? I, I don't know. I always done it. That's I've how, always that's done how EQ I was first. To do it. Yeah. Yeah. Everything you read tells you to do EQ last as well. Not last, but like after the compressor. But I like to do it before, and then then your limiter at the end. So and that that's pretty much all you need in your stack. You don't need anything else other than if you've got a lot of sibilants, T's and S's, you can put a deesser on there, and uh, and quality you, too. It, yeah, if you if you don't have a pop filter, you could put a deplosive thing in there to get rid of the puzzes and the buzz. And you can get even get like de reverb filters to get rid of all the reverb in the room, which help, but they sound a bit squishy. But yeah. And next we're gonna start talking about recording bit rates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't really matter unless you've got loads of noise. The higher the higher your bit rate it record at, the lower the noise floor. Oh no, no, I was talking about for recording. I'm trying to record at 1080, 60 frames a second. How, what do I set everything at? What's the perfect setting? Uh, it's kind of vary for your computer and everything and you. Yeah. Foxy settings Sorry. for recording at 1080 is not going to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, literally anyone else listening to the podcast that doesn't care or isn't interested. Oh, I'll tell you, but... I'll tell you even another minor thing that somebody out there may not have even considered and didn't even know. Remember when I had a bad ground on my computer and oh, the microphone the would just... Ground loops. If you have, you really need to make sure you're grounded. Like my computer is not plugged up into my default wall outlet because yeah. it, it gets improper grounding. I'm literally running my computer on an extension cord from a separate plug-in that gives me a good ground in this house because a microphone will pick up a, a bad ground and it's horrible it, it will and especially if you have two different uh, let's say you've got uh the computers are worse for this um like i won't run anything from the head for the audio jacks coming out the back of my pc because they the ground is awful yep. and the reason it, if i take if i just have my pc plugged in to the mains it's fine but if there's anything else attached to the PC that also goes into a wall outlet, then that, this is what becomes a, what's called a ground loop, and you just get this horrendous noise on everything you can't get rid of. So, yeah, you go through like a USB interface or some sort of interface between your PC and your microphone so that you don't get affected by that ground loop, or try not yeah, to well. at least. Jeez. Yep, it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. Oh, God. The, yeah. <laughs> oh, the other thing I, I do, uh, although I don't have it, like most of the effects we talked about, I actually have running on my microphone as I'm recording now, so I only have to do a bit of tweaking for the podcast or the videos. But one I, one I always add in on the podcast afterwards because it's quite intensive is something called a de-breath filter, uh, yep. and that gets rid of all those horrible breath noises. So, yeah, yeah and, I, and I can't even help it with mine because I smoked for 20-some-odd years. I still I still hear it in some of my videos, and I'm like, oh, my God, I haven't even smoked in almost a year and a half now, and it's just uh, annoying. That's yeah. just a, just like muscle memory habit of talking, just the, way you, just the way you breathe in. You're used to taking big breaths, and I do the same thing a lot of the time. Yeah, but it, it, it's weird because I always have a fan running in the background or I have an air conditioner or something, and when I don't have those, it's like every breath that I take is like, <laughs> it feels massive. It's like suddenly realizing that you need to blink or you need to breathe, you know? It's like, ah, it's good luck. Now, all of y'all make sure you're all blinking and breathing out there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what's difficult, and this is what I was trying to solve out today. It should. If you are good at speaking into a microphone and you speak at a regular level, you might notice quite a lot of YouTubers, not necessarily Minecraft ones, but quite a lot of YouTubers, Will speak quite softly into the microphone so that they can really speak at the same level the entire time that they're talking and what they can achieve by doing that is you can get really accurate with your compressor and your gate to the point where you can literally take out all of the breath noises just with your gate and you are only compressing the audio you want to hear because the problem with the compressor is if you've got audio that's all over the place loud and quiet like i am because i go loud and i go quiet i move away from the microphone then you end up compressing too much and you end up boosting up the, the breath as well, which can be obviously very detrimental. If you're boost, boosting up breath noises, then you get really horrible <gasps> like noises every yeah. time you do anything. And uh, yeah, that, so th the trick to getting around that is to just try and speak at a really steady level, but it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> right, we should move on to like, 
Oh, you want me to read this next one? Do we have to read this person? I mean... No, this per we need to, because this poor person, they've had a tough time slide. Okay, all right. So the next one's from Marabella J down here. This says, podcast people, why do I get made fun of for my bug reports? Spawn proof the desert? Come on. And telling me just to deal with the XP orb floating in my face while I'm in the water. Really? Will I always get made of fun of on these things? It's like no one is taking me seriously. Jade walks away and punches a zombified piglin out of frustration. That was the last time anyone saw of her pod posting in the Minecraft update. Can you hear that slide? What's that? No, I, we've not. maybe got the audio a little bit too quiet, but I, I'm pretty sure there's the world's smallest violin playing in the background. Um, hold, hold on, I'm, I'm trying to listen. Hold on, I'm, I'm, let me. It's very quiet. You have to I'm, turn I'm, the podcast I'm, up really loud to hear this. Okay, I'm, I'm listening. Oh, it stopped now. Oh, they, yeah. they obviously didn't no. care all that much. No, not enough. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Out of touch, he's back. Slack. Oh, nice. They say, Foxy, Slack, and Jesse, have you guys thought about or discussed doing proper videos for the podcast? I would be, uh, I for one would be interested for sure. Yeah, uh, when they say, when you say proper videos, do you mean like wet face cam video? Or do you mean like recording in Minecraft podcast? I mean, we talked about this a long time ago. The, the, I'm going to give Out of Dutch the, the brief story that they may not have been here for the beginning for. It's a podcast. Okay. It's not a video. <laughs> yeah. It's an audio <laughs> experience. Okay. It's interesting that I think, uh, I think the game's changing for podcasts. I see more and more people that were doing podcasts going over to you, YouTube and, or, or Twitch and live streaming their podcasts with, with their webcams. And podcasts are becoming slowly, although they shouldn't be because it's an audio-based medium. They are becoming slowly but surely a uh, like a video one where you would like the one show that the LTT does, for instance, is all recorded uh, a video as well, and it does make for interesting viewing. I I don't think it will be that long before you see things like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts start adding uh, video feeds into there as well. At some point, I bet that will happen because more and more people are going to YouTube to upload their podcasts and the less and less people are using these services. So maybe... You think they'll have to do it to survive? I don't know. Like For the live ones, I'm, I was thinking maybe we could turn our webcams on, but then it would be better if we were all there rather than just individual, but I don't know. We could give it a go. We give it a go. I always thought of the podcast like a radio show. Yeah, me it's too. something I'd listen to while I was driving. Yeah, and if you add well, a video effect to it, then you're just no. It just you, you, no. You don't want me watching a video while you're driving. <laughs> no, certainly you don't want it to be an interesting video. <laughs> yeah, well, you want people to listen to the podcast while they're playing Minecraft, while they're playing video games, while they're doing stuff around the house, while they're cleaning. If suddenly you tie a video to it, you're cutting down the potential. Oh, I can't listen to the, I can't because I need to watch it. It's not something I listen to anymore. It's something I need to watch too. Because what if Foxy, you know, makes an over exaggerated expression and throws something across the room, but I don't hear it, you know? And he got up and walked away and slammed the door because he couldn't believe how a comment went. It's suddenly a different medium. It's, it's, mm. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think we'll probably come back to this one again in the future. I, I see this this being a topic for discussion probably on regular occasions until we be like the whole face cam things like, I'm not doing it, I'm not. Oh, okay, fine, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, then it comes down to if we did, where do we set an acceptable standard? You know, do, do, do we set up backgrounds? Do we set up green screens? Do we record just our raw background? You know, where does, where does it come in? I don't think that matters. Like, I don't think it needs to be particularly polished i think i think people just want to see what really if i'm sitting here in a tank it. top without my hair brushed or anything like that you did, really well that's up to you you know if that's how you want to present yourself i mean <laughs> i might put a hat on <laughs> <laughs> yeah geez i don't know we'll, we'll come back to that one in the future it's not an awful question uh dutch but we we're very much sticklers for this is a podcast not a video <laughs> if it changes we'll let you know <laughs> yeah exactly right slack our last question is from tyler b this week and tyler b says i know this is a minecraft podcast unofficial but i am curious what do you three know about hightail or <laughs> other than 
that which is made by the same Hypixel Studio that run Hypixel Minecraft server, assuming you research it a bit before answering my prior question, what do you think of the game from what you know of it? Look, isn't that game dead? No. No, it's not. Um, it's, oh, geez. I, I, all of my knowledge of Hytale is based on assumption and hearsay. So Same. I did check it out. It is still in development. Uh, in fact, Slack, do you want to do your special Googling powers and find out when it's due to release? Because I no, think no, it's either I'm next already, year or the year I'm after. Already, I've already started doing that. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I checked the other day, and I'm sure it was either 2023 or 2024. I'm tempted to say 2024. Oh, is it 2023? Yeah. So when did it... When was it... Do you remember, like, literally years ago, they dropped a trailer and they showed loads of gameplay, and they hyped it up as if it was just about to come out. Do you remember that? Yeah, and they made it, and everybody assumed it was going to be like Minecraft, and I don't think it had nothing to do with that. Exactly, and this is what I think is what caused them to go back to the drawing board and start again, and this is where the hearsay and the assumptions come in. So they announced years ago that they were going to be creating Hytale, and it because obviously it was made by Hypixel that are to do with Minecraft, and it was done in a very Minecraft blocky style. They said it was going to be an RPG, and there was going to be uh, bosses and this aspect and that aspect, but they never once mentioned mining, crafting, building, anything like that. So I think it was fully developed, or getting onto boards being fully developed as just a third-person RPG with the Minecraft style. They released this amazing trailer, which was fully rendered. It looked like they'd stolen some Minecraft assets from it. So when, when everything went quiet, there was a lot of talk about have Mojang stepped in and like told them they need to change this, that, and the other. Maybe Microsoft said, no, sorry, you, this is too close to home. I don't know. Don't know about any of that. But what I think happened is they went, because everyone everybody was expecting it to be Minecraft 2, as in you could build Minecraft and do the RPG stuff. And I don't think they'd even thought about adding that into the game because they're mini, mini game specialists at the end of the day. They don't, they're not interested in the mining and the crafting. They're interested in the engagement and the fun. So I think they go, everyone's expecting this. If we release this and it hasn't got it, it's going to bomb. We need to go back to the drawing board and start like add all of those things in. And I think that was a much bigger job than they, they thought it was going to be. And uh, and that's why it's been, well, in development for how many years now? It must be well, getting on for five years. Well, according to the wiki, production began in 2015. And <laughs> the announcement Eight was years. made in 2018, and they released the trailer. And once they released the trailer they decided to step back and add more into the game. And yeah, the, the mining and the crafting. <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't there. Now they're saying that in the summer of 2022, development updates stated that Hytale won't be ready until 2023. That means that Hytale will not come out until 2024 or later at this point in time. So it's 2024. I was right. No, no. Yeah, so I, I imagine COVID will have had a, a bit of a knock-on effect to this. I'm sure that will have slowed things down somewhat. But, yeah, I just, I don't think it was any, anything like the game that everyone believed it was going to be. So well, Either one or two things is going to happen with this game. They've went back and they've reworked it and they're including mining and crafting into it and it's going to come out and it's going to be epic. Or it's going to come out and everybody's going to compare it to Minecraft and it's going to flop. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I they're, mean, if they've been they're, working they're, on they it They put since, themselves in a hard shadow, haven't they? <laughs> if they've been working on it since 2015, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So even if there was just two people working on it, that's still a lot of money. You know, paying for those resources, paying for those people, paying for all the assets that they've done, paying for all of the design work. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine? No, oh, it's... it's... Phew. And there's like nothing really new about this at all. No. That you can so, find nothing from more than two to three years ago on any true information or video. Well, we, we're thing. nearly in 2023 now. So we've only got a year and a bit to wait. <laughs> uh, oh, geez. Hmm. So there we go. We, back. Yep. <laughs> we, yeah, exactly. That's if it doesn't get pushed back again. Geez. So we don't know much about it. We know we, we've got some ideas. We know 
the rough timeline, but that is it, unfortunately. Unless you've got anything else to say on that Slack. Uh, no. We'll see In that case, here. that is just about the end of today's podcast. All there is left to do is remind you that we are now 100% supported by Patreon. So if you are enjoying the show and you would like to help us out by supporting us, then you can head over to patreon.com forward slash the Minecraft update. Um, right, Slack, what are you going to be doing content-wise this week, or are you having a week off? No official plans other than normal videos. Streams are up in the air until I can get this rage under control. If I feel good, yeah. I'll do one, but if I feel bad, I'm not doing it. It's the safest way to be. I, I um, probably... I've, it's going to be hit and miss for me until the new year, to be honest with you. Poss possibly streams. I got a bunch of video stuff going out, but it's mainly stream replays, so yeah watch this space for me um and on that note all that's left to say is the same thing that i say at the end of every single podcast slack and that is if you dump dump your pepsi in the good idea bin then all of them get deleted what no no it was if if you spent eight years building hightail and it still hasn't got mining and crafted in maybe get a different job Oh, burn. <laughs> well, no, no, unfortunately, peeps, it is time to end. Thank you very much, Slack. Merry Christmas, everybody. And Merry we will Christmas, see you everyone. all. I think the next one, will the next one be in the new year? It'll be, no, it'll be the 30th one. if we record oh. it next week. Well, if, so, if yeah. it drops correctly, it'll be a farewell from this year. Otherwise. Yeah. New Year special. Hmm. Goodbye. Bye.